one and Yaakov sent messengers. Rabbi Yehuda begins with a discussion of the good inclination and the evil inclination to angels that constantly abide by man. When man is virtuous, the good inclination gains dominion over the evil inclination, and the right side prevails over the left. Rabbi Lazer then speaks of the Sheshanah and the legions of holy angels who protected David from the king of Gat and Yaakov when he was delivered from Laban. In the ensuing dialogue, the rabbis analyze when and why. Yaakov was left alone by the angels and how he managed to prevail over Ezov's minister. Finally, Rabbi Shimon explains Yaakov's actions in sending a band of angels to Ezov in order to bring about a reconciliation in fulfillment of the verse. Better is one lightly esteemed the relevance of this passage when we know that a specific action is positive and in our best interest another voice inside inevitably talks us out of it when we know that a particular behavior or action is negative. Something impels us to engage in it anyway even though we don't really want to. These are the good and evil inclinations at work. We must recognize these two urges as distinct voices battling for control over our behavior. The moment we recognize the evil inclination as our true enemy, we can begin to remove its influence over us. The spiritual forces arising from this section reveal this metaphysical truth endowing us with the strength to resist and overcome our negative tendencies. One end. Yaakov sent messengers. Beersheet 324. Rabbi Yehuda began the discussion with the verse. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Tehillim 9111. This verse has already been explained by the friends. When man is born, the evil inclination enters with him and constantly denounces him as it is written. Sin crouches at the door. Beersheet 47. What is meant by sin crouch? C-H-E-S. It refers to the evil inclination at the door means at the opening of the womb at a person's birth. To David also called the evil inclination by the name sin as it is written. And my sin is ever before me. Tehillim 515. This is because it tempts man every day to sin before his master. The evil inclination never leaves man from the day of his birth. The good inclination comes to man only when he seeks purity. Three and when does man seek purity on his thirteenth birthday? Man joins with the good inclination on the right and the evil inclination on the left. They are literally two. Appointed angels found constantly with man for when man seeks to be purified the evil inclination is humbled before him and the right rules over the left and both the good inclination and the evil inclination watch over man whichever way he travels this is the essence of the verse for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you all your ways. Tehillim 9111 5 Rabbi Lazar applies this verse to Yaakov as the Holy One blessed be he surrounded Yaakov with legions of angels. Because he came complete with the supernal tribes who were in a state of perfection as it is written and Yaakov continued on his way and angels of Elohim met him. Beersheet 322 It has been explained that after being saved from Laban and departing from him the Shechanah joined Yaakov and legions of saintly angels surrounded him at that point Yaakov said when he saw them a bit three from these angels he sent a group to Esau this is the meaning of the verse and Yaakov sent messengers also. Angels, surely these were real angels. Six Rabbi Yitzhak said it is written, The angel of Hashem encamps round about those who fear him and he delivers them. Tehillim 348. This verse has already been explained, but in another place it is written, For he shall give his angels charge over you, namely many angels, whereas here only one is mentioned as it is written, The angel of Hashem encamps. He answers the verse, For he shall give his angels charge over you, refers to angels in general, but the verse, The angel of Hashem refers to the Shechanah as it is written, and the angel of Hashem appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. Shema 32, just as it refers to the Shechanah in the first verse, so the angel mentioned here also points to the Shechanah, and so the angel of Hashem encamps round about those who fear him to encircle them in every direction so as to deliver them, and when the Shechanah resides inside man, all the holy hosts come there, seven come and behold. When King David was saved from Achish king of Gat he said the angel of Hashem encamps for the Shechanah surrounded him and saved him from Achish's people and those who attacked him as it is written Vaitholel and feigned himself mad in their hands. Ishmuel 2114 he asks why is it written Vaitholel rather than Vaishtajay as it is written you have brought this fellow to play the madman had led in my presence. Ishmuel 2168 he answers this verse refers to what David said earlier as it is written for I was envious of the holy madman Tehillim 733 so the holy one blessed be he said to him upon your life you shall be in need of it yet and when he came to the house of Achish and was attacked it is written he feigned himself mad in their hands like those holy madmen he first envied when he said for I was envious of the madman only then did the Shechanah come and protect him she dwelt there around David 9 you may ask if the Shechanah resides. Only in her own place which is the Holy Land why was the Shechanah upon him again which is outside the Holy Land he answers she certainly does not dwell outside the land of Israel for people to draw plenty from her but can dwell outside to rescue men thus when Yaakov arrived from the house of Laban all the holy camps encircled him and did not leave him alone 10 Rabbi Shizkiah asked if this is so why is it written and Yaakov remained alone Beersheet 3235 where were the legions of angels who encircled him and came with him Rabbi Yehuda replied because he let himself into danger by remaining alone at night and saw clearly the danger he was in the angels deserted him for they came to guard him only from unseen dangers then before entering into danger he stated I am unworthy of the least of all the mercies and all the truth which you have shown your servant to be 11 with this he referred to the holy camps of angels who usually encircled him but had left him because he had Led himself to a visible danger. Eleven Rabbi Yitzhak said, therefore the angels left him alone with the officer appointed for Ezab who arrived with heavenly approval. At just that time the others left to sing before the Holy One. Blessed be he as was required at that precise moment. Later they returned to him. This is the meaning of the verse. I am unworthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth. And now I have become two camps. The camp of the Shechanah and his own household, however, consists of one camp as it is written. This is Elohim's camp of it. Three therefore why is it written? Two camps. It is to teach that he was perfect in both aspects from the white and red denoting Shasadim and Shachma from right and left. Hence he says two camps. Twelve Rabbi Lazar said we have learned night was under the control of Ezab meaning the left side without the right. At that time it is written let there be lights have me or Bear sheet 114 written without the letter Bob being Wednesday. He which could not give light without Chesedim for this reason Yaakov remained alone as Yaakov representing the sun denoting Zeir and remained alone without the Nukba as the moon the Nukba was concealed from the sun namely Zeir and called Yaakov yet the Holy One blessed be he continued to guard Yaakov enough so that Ezov's officer could not overcome him as it is written he saw that he did not prevail against him Beersheet 3225 13 he explained why he could not prevail against him the angel looked to the right of Yaakov and saw Abraham the perfection of the right column he looked to the left of Yaakov and saw its hot the perfection of the left column he looked at the body of Yaakov and saw it was comprised of parts of both the right and left sides being the perfection of the central column since the other side can have no hold on perfection only on imperfection he could not overcome him then he touched the hollow of his thigh the one pillar nearest to the body but somewhat removed from it thus it possesses an aspect of imperfection and the angel seized it and the hollow of Yaakov's thigh was put out of joint 14 for this reason it is written the angel of Hashem encamps round about those who fear him and he delivers them he circled him on all sides in order to save him from the officer of Esab and when the Shechanah resided with him numerous camps of angels accompanied him from these angels Yaakov sent some to Esau 15 and Yaakov sent messengers Rabbi Abba asks what motivated Yaakov to send messengers to Esau would it not have been better to refrain from sending any to him he answers Yaakov said I know that Esau reveres the father's honor and has never troubled him as long as I know that my father is alive so I do not fear Esau so as long as my father is alive I wish to appease him thus he immediately hastened and Yaakov sent messengers before him 16 and Yaakov sent messengers Rabbi Shimon began it. Discussion with the verse better is one literally esteemed who owns a servant than one who pranks himself but lacks bread. Mishlei 129 this verse refers to the evil inclination who constantly accuses man. The evil inclination causes man to become haughty and proud encouraging man to curl his hair until the evil inclination towers over him and
Then later, however, the one who pranks himself will become his servant, and then he will lack bread. This refers to Esav, who will become Yaakov's servant, who was given plenty of corn and wine. Of twenty-eight, twenty, come and behold, Yaakov knew that he needed him. Now, therefore, he appeared as if he was lightly esteemed by doing so. He showed more wisdom and guile than he had ever shown against Esav. Had Esav been aware of this wisdom, he would have killed himself rather than coming to this. However, Yaakov did all this with wisdom, and about him, Shana said, "The adversaries of Hashem shall be broken in peace, and he shall give strength to his king." I Shmuel two hundred and ten, section two. I have sojourned with Laban. Rabbi Yehuda begins a discussion of Yaakov's message to Esav. I have sojourned with Laban, interpreting Yaakov's words as threatening to Esav, who desired to destroy Yaakov. There follows a discussion of Laban, the universally feared magician and sorcerer, who was. Powerless against Yaakov, just as Bilam was powerless when he tried to destroy the children of Israel with the same magical arts. The reason for their failure, we're told, is that the power of sorcery is subservient to the children of Israel. And God finally, Rabbi Yossi, interprets Yaakov's message to Laban as indicating that Yaakov humbled himself in order to divert Esau's attention from Yaakov's true blessing so that Esau would not harbor envy and hate for him. The relevance of this passage. The path of the Torah and the power of the Zohar empower us to rise above unseen mystical powers. The ego, however, is like a leg iron that anchors us to this physical dimension, and its influence is humility is a key trait that can unlock the shackles. This passage arouses humility, enabling us to avert the effects of negative cosmic forces. We elevate into the sphere of the supernal wisdoms which protect and bless us in all our endeavors. 21 And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall you speak to my. Lord Esau, your servant Yaakov says, Thus I have sojourned with Laban and stayed there until now. Bereshit 325. At once Yaakov introduced himself as Esau's servant so that Esau would not take heed of the blessings that his father bestowed on him. Yaakov put them aside for the end of days. 22. Rabbi Yehuda asked, What did Yaakov have in mind when he sent Esau a message reading, I have sojourned with Laban? Did this message accomplish anything regarding his mission to Esau? He answers a rumor. Circulated that no one had ever escaped the clutches of Laban of Aram as he was well versed in sorcery and wizardry. He was also the father of Behu, who in turn was the father of Bilam as it is written, Bilam the son of Behu, the sorcerer Yahashua 1322. Yet although Laban was the greatest practitioner of sorcery and wizardry, he could not overcome Yaakov, whom he attempted to annihilate in several ways as it is written, an Aramean wanted to destroy my father Devarim 265, and so he sent him it. Message I have sojourned with Laban to make him aware of his power. 23 Rabbi Abba said everyone was aware that Laban was the best at sorcery and wizardry and he could use sorcery to do away with anyone he wished. All that Bilam knew came from Laban regarding Bilam it is written for I know that he whom you bless is blessed and he whom you curse is cursed. Bimid bar 226 because everyone feared Laban and his sorcery. The first words that Yaakov sent Esau were I have sojourned with Laban. In case Esau thought it was for a short period perhaps a month or a year Yaakov advised and stayed there until now. Dash 20 years did I stay with him. 24 you may say that he gained nothing but he said to him and I have oxen and asses. Bereshit 32 six, these are sentences of judgment that is demons when these two collaborate they cooperate to harm the world meaning it is not their nature to inflict damage except when they are joined for this reason it is written you shall not plow with them. Ox and an ass together, Devarim 2210, for this causes these two demons, namely the ox and the ass, to be joined and to inflict damage on the world. 25 The verse flocks and men servants and women servants refers to lower crowns of the clipon which the Holy One blessed be he slew in Egypt. They are called the firstborn of cattle, Shemot 1229, the firstborn of the captive and the firstborn of the maidservant, Shemot 115. Esau took fright and came toward him. He feared Yaakov as much as Yaakov feared him. 26 This is like the story of a man who was walking along the road when he heard a robber was lurking along the way when another man approached him. He asked, Where are you from? The man replied that he was from an army brigade. He said, Stay away from me, I have a snake that will kill anyone who approaches me. That man returned to the chief of the brigade and said, There is a man coming who has a snake that bites and kills anyone who approaches him. 27 The chief heard and was frightened, he said, It is best to go meet and appease him. When the traveler saw the chief, he was afraid, he said, Woe is me now, the chief will kill me. He began to bow and kneel before him. The chief then said, If he really had a snake that kills, he would not have bowed before me. Thus the chief regained his composure and said, Since he bows so much before me, I shall spare him. 28. This is why Yaakov said, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed there until now. I lingered with him these twenty years, and I bring with me a snake which kills people. Esau heard this and said, Woe to me, who shall stand before him? For now Yaakov shall kill me with his mouth. He thought that because he overpowered Laban Bilam's grandfather, his strength was surely as great as that of Bilam of whom it is said, For I know that he whom you bless is blessed, and he whom you curse is cursed, and he can kill with his mouth. He then came out to meet him to appease him. 29. Once he saw him, it is written then. Yaakov was greatly afraid and distressed. Bereshit 328 When he approached him, he began to bow and prostrate himself before him as it is written and bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. Bereshit 333 Esau said, If he had so much power, he would not have bowed before me. He then began to become haughty again. 30 Come and behold, it is written of Bilam and Elohim came to Bilam at night. Bimid bar 2220 of Laban the verse says, And Elohim came to Laban. The Aramean in a dream by night and said to him, Take heed that you speak not to Yaakov. Bereshit 3124 This shows you that Laban was as great as Bilam. He asks, Why is it written that you speak not rather than that you harm not? He answers, Laban did not chase Yaakov with an army of men to wage war against him for the power of Yaakov and his sons is greater than that of Laban, but he chased him to kill him with his mouth and destroy everything as it is written. An Aramean wanted to destroy. My father, this is why it says that you speak not and not that you harm not. It is also written, it is in the power of my hand to do. How did he know he had the power from that which Elohim of your father spoke to me last night? 31. This is the testimony that the Holy One, blessed be he, commanded to pronounce as it is written, and you shall speak and say before Hashem your Elohim and Aramean wanted to destroy my father, and you shall speak is similar to the verses you shall not bear. False witness Shema 2013 and also and has testified against his brother Devarim 19 18, 32. It is written of Bilam that he went not as at other times to seek for enchantments. Bimid bar 241 as was his wound being a diviner of Laban 2. The scripture says, I have learned by signs Bereshit 3027, which means that he consulted magic and sorcery to learn of Yaakov's plans when he wanted to destroy Yaakov. He planned to do it by enchantment and sorcery, but the Holy One, blessed be he, did not. Permit him to do so, rather he said to him that you speak not. 33 This is the meaning of what Bilam Laban's grandson said. Surely there is no enchantment in Yaakov nor divination in Israel. Bimid bar 2323 For who could prevail against them when my grandfather wished to destroy their father with divination and enchantment but could not not having obtained permission to curse from the Holy One. Blessed be he as it is written. Surely there is no enchantment in Yaakov nor divination in Israel. 34 Laban used ten kinds of divination and enchantments from the illumination of the lower crowns but could not prevail against Yaakov in connection with this it is written and you have changed my wages ten times. Bereshit 3141 Laban used all these tools against him but could not harm him as it is written and changed my wages ten times but Elohim did not allow him to hurt me. But 7 he asks what is the meaning of times had He answers it was translated into kinds heb. Minim it is also written the demons after whom they have gone astray have zonum vayikra 177 times are literally kinds Aramaic sign in the ten kinds of sorcery and divination of the lower crowns of the clipot Laban employed all of these against him 35 these ten kinds are a diviner that uses divinations a soothsayer or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a medium or a wizard or a necromancer devarim 1810 to 11 there are ten in all with the divinations it seems
Bilam would have any knowledge of the upper holiness he disagrees with what was said that Bilam knew that his divination came from the Malchut of holiness this is because the Holy One blessed be he desires no other people or tongue to make use of his glory but his holy children alone that is the children of Israel who are called children to Hashem he said you shall therefore sanctify yourselves and you shall be holy Vayikra 1144 which means that those who are holy shall use holy things and only the children of Israel are holy as it is written for you are a holy people Devarim 142 you and no other people are holy 39 those who are unholy find that defilement awaits them of them the scripture says he is unclean he shall dwell alone outside the camp shall his habitation be Vayikra 1346 that is away from holiness the impure touches on the impure as it is written and shall cry unclean unclean 45 which means that whoever is unclean cries to the unclean one Seeks out one's own kind. 40 in commenting on Rabbi Yehuda's observation that one seeks out one's own kind. Rabbi Yitzhak said, Is it becoming for Yaakov who was holy to say that he was defiled by Levin and his magic? Could it be possibly be considered a credit to him to say, I have sojourned with Levin? Despite what Rabbi Yehuda said that everything follows its own kind, Rabbi Yossi gave another explanation for the difficulty in that verse. It is written, I am Ezab, your firstborn Beersheet. 2719 here we should ask, Is it becoming to a righteous man such as Yaakov to change his name to that of an impure one? The explanation is that under the I there is a tonal pause below the I, I has written the tone pushed over as below ESAB, your firstborn. I has found the tone Zakhef Kadon whose tone separates the word I from ESAB, your firstborn. What he actually said was, I am who I am, though Ezab is your firstborn, as has already been explained. 41 here also IT is written, I have oxen and Asses that is do not pay attention to the blessing my father bestowed on me to think that it was fulfilled in me he blessed me be lord over your brethren and let your mother's sons bow down to you Beersheet 2729 hence I say to you to my master Ezob your servant Yaakov he blessed me with plenty of corn and wine yet I have no stock of these I have oxen and asses flocks and men servants as a shepherd in the field he blessed me with the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth yet instead I have sojourned with Laban a sojourner without even a house let alone the fatness of the earth the last was not fulfilled in me as I have no land I have only sojourned with Laban he said all this so that Ezob would not be jealous of him on account of the blessings he received and bring accusations against him 42 Rabbi Abba said it is written that Yaakov was a plain man dwelling in tents Beersheet 2527 he was called a plain man because his abode was in two supernal temples. Bina and Malchut, the secret of the tent of Rachel and the tent of Leah, he reconciles both sides, which meant that he balanced and perfected the right. And REFT columns do not conclude from the verse I have sojourned with Laban that he was contaminated by the divination of Laban. But in light of Rabbi Yehuda's observation that one seeks out one's own kind, according to the question of Rabbi Yitzhak, the explanation for I have sojourned with Laban is that he was wholeheartedly thankful for the grace and truth shown him by the Holy One. Blessed be he, for everybody knows that although no one can be saved from Laban's accusations, the Holy One, blessed be he, rescued me from his hands when Laban wanted to destroy me. This is what he meant by the verse I have sojourned with Laban. Furthermore, he said all this so that Ezob would not envy him his blessings, but rather think that they were not fulfilled in him. Thus, Ezob would not harbor any hate for him as Rabbi Yos. I explained of this. Scripture says, For the ways of Hashem are right. Hashia 1410, and you shall be perfect with Hashem your Elohim. Devarim 1813, section 3. The prayers of the righteous, the rabbis teach us that the combined prayers of the righteous are more powerful than those of any individual. Although Yaakov was spiritually complete, he embodied all three columns. He was afraid of Esau because he did not consider himself worthy of a miracle and because he desired to reserve his merits for the benefit of his descendants. Thus, Yaakov fulfills and reinforces the verse. Happy is the man who fears always. After Rabbi Shimon describes Yaakov's role as the firmest support among the patriarchs who sustain the world, he turns to the subject of the years which Yaakov, Yosef, and Abraham conceded to King David. David, we learn, had no light portion of his own because he, like Itzhak, was of the side of darkness. Rabbi Yossi then discourses on the models for prayer supplied by both David and Yaakov prayer we learn is divisible into two parts corresponding to the lower grade of Malchut and the higher inner grade of Bina. The relevance of this passage our prayers receive the assistance of the righteous by virtue of this passage so that our spiritual requests reach the highest realm of the upper world's humility before the light of the Creator is also awakened within us further supporting our prayers finally the wisdom of David and Yaakov and their insights into the divine structure of prayer provide our own prayers with additional power and guidance to ensure that they reach their proper destination 43 and the messengers return to Yaakov saying we came to your brother Ezob and he is also coming to meet you and 400 men with him Beersheet 327 he asks after saying we came to your brother do we not know they refer to Ezob as he had no other brothers he answers we came to your brother means that he did not repent and walk the path of Righteousness as may be thought but remain the evil Ezob as before and he is also coming to meet you does not mean as you may say by himself but rather he has 400 men with him 44 why was all this specified because the Holy One blessed be he always longs for the prayers of the righteous and adorns himself with them as we have already said the angel in charge of the prayers of the children of Israel whose name is Sandalphone receives all their prayers and weaves them into a crown for the life of the world the Holy One blessed be he desires the prayers of the righteous all the more they become a crown with which to adorn the Holy One blessed be he you may wonder why Yaakov was fearful since camps of holy angels accompanied him he was fearful because the righteous do not rely on their merit but on their prayers and supplications before their master 45 come and behold Rabbi Shimon said that the prayer of the congregation rises before the Holy One blessed be he and he is adorned by that prayer because it ascends in several ways one asking for chesedim another for Burat and the third for mercy it consists of several sides the right side the left and the middle as chesedim are drawn from the right Burat from the left and mercy from the middle because it comprises several aspects it is woven into a wreath and put on the head of the righteous one the life of the world that is which gives salvation to the mukbah and from her to the whole congregation but a solitary prayer does not include all the sides rather it contains only one aspect one can only ask for chesedim Burat or mercy therefore the solitary prayer is not prepared and accepted as is that of the congregation it is not included within all the three columns as is the prayer of the congregation come and behold Yaakov included all three columns being the chariot of the central column which includes both therefore the holy one blessed be he desired his prayer perfected by all three columns it is therefore written and Yaakov was greatly afraid and distressed the Holy One blessed be he did all that to encourage Yaakov to pray for he craved his prayer 46 Rabbi Yehuda began the discussion with the verse happy is the man who fears always but he who hardens his heart shall fall into evil Mishlei 2814 happy are the children of Israel whom the Holy One blessed be he desires and to whom he gave the Torah of truth with which to attain eternal life for whoever is occupied with the study of the Torah receives supernal life from the Holy One blessed be he and is ushered into the life of the world to come as it is written for he is your life and the length of your days Devarim 3020 and, and through this word you shall prolong your days Devarim 3247 for it is life in this world and life in the world to come 47 Rabbi Lazar said whoever studies the Torah for its own sake does not die by the hand of the evil inclination which is the angel of death because he holds onto the tree of life and does not relax his grip therefore the bodies of the righteous who are occupied in the study of the Torah are not defiled after death because the spirit of defilement does not dwell with them 48 he asks why was Yaakov who was the tree of life afraid of Esab even though the other side cannot rule over him since the Holy One blessed be he said to him and behold I am with you Beersheet 2815 and since angels of Elohim met him with all of these camps of holy angels why was he afraid 49 he answers it is all true that there was no need to be afraid but Yaakov did not want to rely on a miracle from the Holy One blessed be he because he thought he was unworthy of such a miracle why because he was of no service to his father and mother did not study the Torah during the 22 years he spent with Levin and
Dream wrapped in his clothes as his life prolonged. 52 Rabbi Shimon said we have already learned that before King David entered the world he had no life at all except for the 70 years given him by Adam. So King David lived 70 years and Adam lived a thousand years less 70 years. So Adam and David existed within the first millennium after the creation of the world. 53 He began the discussion with the verse he asked life of you and you did give it him length of days forever. And ever tell him 215 he asked life of you refers to King David for when the Holy One blessed be he created the Garden of Eden and put the soul of King David in it he looked at it and saw it had no life of its own it thus stood before him all day long when he created Adam he said here is life for David from Adam came the 70 years that King David lived in the world 54 another explanation is that the fathers each gave him years from their own lives Abraham gave him from his own life. As did Yaakov and Yosef Itzhak did not give him anything because King David belonged to the same side as he did 55 Abraham surely gave King David 5 of his years for he lived only 175 of his 180 years 5 years less than his due like Itzhak Yaakov could have lived as long as Abraham 175 years but he lived only 147 28 years less than his due thus Abraham and Yaakov gave King David 33 years of life Yosef lived only 110 years instead of 147 which is 37 years less than Yaakov. Together with the 33 years from Abraham and Yaakov King David received a total of 70 years for his existence and he lived all these years which the patriarchs left him 56 you may wonder why Itzhak did not leave him any of his years as did Abraham Yaakov and Yosef he answers because Itzhak represented darkness that is the left column which is dark before it is included within the right David also came from the side of darkness namely from the left side and whoever is in darkness has no light or life at all David therefore had no light but Abraham Yaakov and Yosef being of the right did have light and shown it on King David from them he had to illuminate and receive life which means that he had to be included within the right for there is no life on the side of darkness the left thus Itzhak did not join the reckoning 57 while you may ask did Yosef give him more life than the others Yosef gave him 37 years while the others gave him a total of 33 he answers Yosef by Himself was the equivalent of all the others because he was called righteous, namely Yezid, which includes all the Sfirah. He shines on the moon and Mukba more than everybody else, and therefore gave King David a greater share of life than all the others, as it is written, and Elohim set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. Bear sheet 117 58. Come and behold, Yaakov's prayer protected him from Esau and not his merit because he wished to keep it in reserve for his descendants and not spend it to serve his own needs against Esau. He therefore prayed to the Holy One, blessed be he, and did not rely upon his merit for his rescue. 59 And said, If Esau come to the one camp and smite it, then the camp which is left shall escape. Bear sheet 329. Come and behold, it is written, and he divided the people that were with him and the flocks and herds and the camels into two camps. He asks, Why did he divide them into two camps? He answers, Because if Esau comes to the one camp and smite it, then the camp which is left shall escape. One may ask, Can not ESAV smite both camps? Wherefrom comes the certainty that one camp shall survive? Sixty, he replies, Come and behold, the Shechina did not stray from the tents of Leah and Rachel. Yaakov said, I know that the Holy One, blessed be he, protects them. So he put the handmaids and their children foremost of the two, saying that if Esau will smite, he will smite these, but I am not afraid for the children of the ladies, because the Shechina is with them. According to this, foremost means the first to encounter danger. Thus he said, Then the camp which is left shall escape, because the Shechina hovers about them after the preparations. He prayed for the handmaids and their children, saying, And Yaakov said, Elohim of my father Abraham, and Elohim of my father, it's Hashem who did say to me, Return to your country and to your kindred, and I will deal well with you. Ibid 1061 Rabbi Yossi began the discussion with it. Verse a prayer of the poor when he faints and pours out his complaint before Hashem Tehillim 1021 this verse has been explained several times yet King David said this when he watched and contemplated the ways of the poor while fleeing from his father in law King Shal then did he say a prayer of the poor this is a prayer of the poor say to the Holy One blessed be he it is the first to be received among all the prayers in the world 62 it is here written a prayer of the poor and elsewhere a prayer of Moshe the man of Elohim Tehillim 901 he asks about the difference between them he answers that prayer of the poor is the hand tefillin the secret of the Mukba the Mukba is called poor because she has nothing of herself and receives everything from Zeir and that prayer of Moshe is the head tefillin Zeir and there should be no separation between the prayer of the poor and the prayer of Moshe the Mukba and Zeir and because they should always be united both are Considered as 163 the prayer of the poor is therefore the first to be received into the presence of the Holy One blessed be he it is received before all other prayers in the world as it is written for he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted Tehillim 2225 come and behold the prayer of the poor is the hand Tefillin that is the Nukka which is the prayer of the poor who are deep in poverty as one who has nothing of his own 64 another explanation is that the prayer alludes to Moshe Zeir and the poor to David the Nukba when he faints refers to the moon the Nukba when it is concealed and the sun Zeir and is gone from her before Hashem Zeir and he pours out his complaint in order to be joined with the sun Zeir and 65 come and behold the prayer of every man is considered prayer but when the prayer of the poor comes before the Holy One blessed be he it breaks down gates and doors to be received and shown into his presence this is the meaning of the verse, and it shall come to pass when he cries to me that I will hear, for I am gracious. Shema 2226, and I will surely hear his cry. But 22, he pours out his complaint before Hashem, namely as one who complains about the judgments of the Holy One. Blessed be he. 66, Rabbi Lazar said the prayer of the righteous causes joy to the congregation of Israel, the Mukba which adorns itself with the prayer before the Holy One. Blessed be he, the Holy One. Blessed be he loves it. Better than the prayer of the poor, the Holy One. Blessed be he desires the prayer of the righteous when they pray in time of need because they know how to appease their master. 67, it is written that Yaakov prayed, Elohim of my father Abraham, and Elohim of my father Itzhak Hashem, who did say to me, he joined everything together into one, not saying Elohim of my father Abraham, who is of the right, and Elohim of my father Itzhak, who is of the left, who did say to me, namely to himself. Who represents the balancing central column? It depends on the central column to adorn his place between Abraham and its hot right and left. He therefore said to him, Return to your country and to your kindred, and I will deal well with you. 68 I am unworthy of the least of all the mercies. He asks what made Yaakov say, I am unworthy together with return to your country and to your kindred, and I will deal well with you. He answers, Yaakov said, You promised to deal well with me, and I know that whatever you do has conditions that your will shall be done. Yet I have no merit because I am unworthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which you have shown your servant. There is no need then to keep your promise. Whatever you did for me until now was not for my merits, but because of your goodness. All those mercies and truths were because of your goodness. For when I first crossed the river Jordan, when I fled Esau, I was alone, and you gave me mercies and truth so that. Now I cross the river with two camps that I asked the two camps he divided 69. Up to this point Yaakov recited the praises of his master then he asked for what he needed this teaches people that it behooves man to first praise his master and only then to pray for himself this is what Yaakov did he first praised his master and when he finished he asked for what he needed 70 this is the meaning of the verse deliver me I pray you from the hand of my brother from the hand of Esau for I fear him lest he come and smite me the mother with the children this means that after praising his master he began to pray it is understood from this that when one prays one's words should be precise he said deliver me I pray you which appears as if it should suffice because he only needed deliverance yet he said to the holy one blessed be he lest you say that you already rescued me from Laban I add from the hand of my brother it may be said that other relatives are also referred to as brothers. As in what Lavin said to Yaakov, because you are my brother, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Bereshit 2915. He then explained, saying, from the hand of Esau, the reason is that it behooves us to explain ourselves fully. He therefore continued by saying, in case you ask why I need delivery, I fear him lest he come and smite me. All this he said to explain and fully clarify things above
corresponds to the inner great by the hidden world and everything is one that is there is need of both he therefore said let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight 74 yeah spoke in the same manner he first explained the matter fully and then vaguely talked of what depends on the meditation of the heart which needs no explanation as it is written and make your seed like the sand of the sea which cannot be numbered for multitude bear sheet 3213 this matter depends on the meditation of the heart and does not require explanation it should be thus as we said that both must be joined together into a complete union happy are the righteous who know how to properly arrange the praises of their master and afterwards say their prayers the scripture therefore reads and said to me you are my servant Israel in whom I will be glorified Yeshua 493 section 4 and Yaakov was left alone Rabbi Shealite. Discussion on the evil spirits that gain influence as a result of the diminution of the moon these spirits assail people when they are sleeping since this is a time when the soul leaves the body and cause people to defile themselves thus we learn it is incumbent on man to purify himself and follow the paths of the Torah the rabbis also warn us not to travel a lonely road by ourselves or to go out at night when there are no people about especially without the light of the moon at these times. Evil spirits those with whom Bilam was associated are at large the relevance of this passage discord and turmoil in our lives can be traced to negative influences and evil forces that dwell in our midst our negative behavior creates openings for destructive entities but the light of this passage seals these openings shut moreover the spiritual energy purifies our soul raises our consciousness and inspires us to eliminate self-destructive impulses that create the cracks and crevices through which dark forces enter our live 75 and Yaakov was left alone Bereshit 3225 Rabbi she opened the discussion with the verse No evil shall befall you nor shall any plague come near your dwelling Tehillim 9110 Come and behold when the Holy One blessed be he created the world he performed in each day the work appropriate for that day as has been explained it has been said that on the fourth day he created the lights but the moon was created lacking because it is a light that diminishes itself for that reason the word lights is spelled without the letter Vav which leaves room for the spirits demons storm winds devils and all the spirits of defilement to exercise sway 76 they all come to hover about the world and seduce men they occupy deserted places in fertile fields not fit for sowing and wasted deserts they are all from the side of defilement we have learned that the spirit of defilement comes from the corrupt serpent which is Lilith it is a very spirit of Uncleanness that is appointed in the world to seduce people to it to him thus the evil inclination gains mastery over the world 77 it is appointed over people and dwells among them it uses witchcraft and stealth to turn them from the ways of the holy one blessed be he just as it seduced Adam and brought death to the world so does it seduce men and cause them to be defiled 78 whoever wishes to be defiled draws upon himself that spirit of defilement and cleaves to it numerous spirits of defilement away to defile him and make him unclean they corrupt him in this world and in the world to come as has already been explained 79 when a man strives to be purified however the spirit of defilement is subdued and loses its sway over him and it is written no evil shall befall you nor shall any plague come near your dwelling rabbi you see said no evil shall befall you refers to Lilith and nor shall any plague come near your dwelling refers to the other harmful demons this has Already been explained, 80 Rabbi Laser said man has been warned not to venture out alone at night, especially when the moon was created lacking and does not fully shine. It has been explained that the spirit of defilement and evil spirit governs at that time. He asks, Who is this evil spirit? He answers, It is the evil serpent, and the plague is the rider of the serpents of Elvis. Evil and plague are as 181, and yet we have learned that plague also refers to the plagues of those born to Adam. For all those years when Adam did not approach his wife, spirits of defilement would come conceive from him and bear him offsprings called the plagues of the sons of man. 82 We learned that when man dreams, he has no control over his body, the body is silent, and the spirit of defilement comes to rest on him. Sometimes impure female spirits come and draw him to them, and they conceive from him and bear spirits and demons who sometimes look like men but without hair on their heads. 83. A man should protect himself from them with all his might he should walk the paths of the Torah to avoid being defiled by them for there is no one who sleeps in his bed at night who does not taste death his soul leaves him and when the body is left without the sacred soul the spirit of defilement comes and hovers about him and he becomes unclean thus a man should not pass his hands over his eyes in the morning because the spirit of defilement dwells on the mighty come and behold though he was beloved by the holy one blessed be he nevertheless since he Yaakov was alone another spirit came to join him 85 Rabbi Shimon said come and behold it is written about the wicked Bilam and he went Shaphai to a steep place Bimidbar 233 what does Shaphai mean it means alone as in the verse and Adarheb Shaphai phone in the path Bereshi 4917 that Is Bilam walks alone as does a snake that lurks in byways and paths what is the purpose of this to draw upon himself the spirit of defilement for he who walks alone at certain times even in town in certain places draws upon himself the defiled spirit 86 thus a man should walk alone on the road and in the city only where other people are about and a man should not walk alone at night because no other people are present for the same reason his body shall not remain all night upon the tree the spiritless corpse should not be left during the night this is why the wicked Bilam was walking along like a snake. Section 5 and there wrestled a man with him Rabbi Shimon explains the difference between dust and earth dust is barren and less important than the earth from which arises all the goodness of the world when Rabbi Yehuda questions him about the meaning of the verse he raises the poor out of the dust Rabbi Shimon explains that dust also signifies humility and the moon when she is not united with Zir and ben, he then applies this metaphor to the children of Israel who are ruled by dust. In exile this dust resembles night when light appears and shines however the children of Israel shall obtain power and the kingdom of glory the relevance of this passage without the light of the creator man remains dark barren and as spiritually worthless as dust on the ground because like the moon man has no light of his own just as the moon derives its light from the sun we receive our light and spiritual sustenance from the realm of Zir and the upper worlds when imbued with this light we receive divine fruits of goodness through our marriage partners our children and all of life's endeavors 87 and there wrestled a man with him he asks what does wrestled have mean Rabbi Shimon replied he came to him from the dust have all be explained dust is of lesser importance than earth he asks what is the difference between dust and earth he answers dust is the residue of fire that is what is left from a fire is called dust it never produces fruits from earth However, all fruits grow as it comprises everything above and below. 88 Rabbi Yehuda said, If this is so, and earth is of such consequence, then what is the meaning of the verse? He raises the poor out of the desolate earth. Ishmuel 28, he replied, Literally, it means humility in such a way he raises the poor out of the earth because the Mukva called earth has nothing of her own but receives everything from Zeir and then out of the earth which possesses nothing as long as it is not united. With Zeir and come the poor who possess nothing but out of earth at the time of union with Zeir and come all the fruits and goodness of the world. All that is done in the world is made from the earth as it is written, All are of the earth and all return to earth. Kahila 320, we have learned that all is of the earth, even the will of the sun, but dust never produces fruits and plants. Therefore, there wrestled a man, some who came out of the dust his Mukva and rides upon it to accuse Yaakov. 89 Until the breaking of the day is the time when his power goes away and disappears as will occur in the future for the exile resembles the night namely it is dark a time when the dust rules over Israel and the people are thrown to the earth until light appears and daylight shines then Israel will have power and will be given the kingdom for they will be high saints as it is written and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the holy ones of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him Daniel 727 section 6 let me go for the day breaks Rabbi Yehuda begins this discussion by quoting the verse who is she that looks out like the dawn to describe the process of raising the children of Israel out of exile this redemption we are told shall be accomplished gradually as an illumination that increases measure by measure this is Matched by a decrease in the illumination and strength of Esau until Esau is completely destroyed after the children of Israel are raised from exile they will wonder with sorrow at all they endure just as at daybreak Yaakov was filled with pain and sorrow for what he suffered
He does to the children of Israel and the righteous among them is done in this way to achieve redemption little by little instead of all at once. This is similar to a person who always dwells in the dark to give him light. First we should shine upon him a small light then as a needle and then a slightly stronger one and so on until full light shines upon him. 92 This is true for Israel as it is written little by little I will drive them out from before you until you be increased. Shema. 2330 It is also true for a man who is recuperating he does recover all at once but becomes well little by little this is not so for Esau for he received illumination at one time and it was lost to him little by little and will continue until Israel becomes stronger and wipe him from this world and the world to come because at first light shone on him instantly he was completely destroyed however the light of Israel shines brighter little by little until they are strong and the Holy One. Blessed be he will shine on them forever 93 everyone asked about them as it is written who is she that looks out like the dawn the dawn had shot her from Shashor meaning black refers to the early morning namely to the darkness that grows stronger before morning light it is the thinest light mentioned and fair as the moon because the light of the moon is stronger than that of dawn and she is clear as the sun whose light is stronger even than that of the moon and finally she is as Terrible as an army with banners which means that her light has reached full strength 94 come and behold in the early morning it is dark and the light is concealed and the morning begins to light up it shines little by little until the light reaches its full strength similarly the holy one blessed be he will shine on the congregation of Israel first he will shine like the dawn which is black and fair as the moon and later clear as the sun eventually he will shine terrible as an army with banners 95 come and behold it is literally written that dawn has gone up rather than daybreaks this is because when dawn comes the minister of ESAB grows stronger and attacks Yaakov this act enables Esau to recover and grow stronger 96 but as the darkness of dawn emerges the light comes and Yaakov becomes stronger for it is his time to shine as it is written and as he passed over Penuel the sun rose upon him and he limped upon his thigh Bereshit 3232 thus the sun rose upon him because it was the time to shine 97 the verse and he limped upon his thigh alludes to the fact that as long as Israel are in exile they suffer pain sorrow and evil mishaps however as soon as day breaks after they have rested they will look back with sorrow in their hearts on all the afflictions and pain they have suffered and they will wonder about them therefore the scripture says the sun rose upon him namely the sun of the time of rest when he limped upon his thigh which means that he was filled with pain and sorrow for what he had suffered 98 when dawn rose Yaakov grew stronger and seized him for the strength of the angel failed since he is only powerful at night while Yaakov rules during the day therefore it is written and he said let me go for the day breaks and I am in your hands this we have already learned section 7 the sinew of the vein Rabashi opens a discussion on the significance of the sinew of Yaakov's thigh which we can now identify as the sciatic nerve had the sinew not failed Yaakov on the night he struggled with Esau's minister Yaakov would have prevailed over Esau's power completely both on high and here below Rabbi Shimon then explains that because the energy of Yaakov's thigh was broken the strength of the upholders of the Torah was diminished as a result none of the prophets except Moses were able to retain their faculties unimpaired when receiving divine messages thus it is incumbent on the children of Israel to preserve the sinew of the thigh being the dark side controls the sciatic nerve in all creatures including cows so that none may be defiled by eating or benefiting from it in other ways in addition we learn the children of Israel are responsible for preserving the power of the Torah by supporting those who toil in it the relevance of this passage the sciatic nerve affects the lower back and extends down through the thigh which supports and upholds it body the thigh corresponds to the students of a righteous age who support their master or to benefactors who financially assist those who engage in Torah study and the revelation of spiritual light when the dark side seeks to penetrate an individual it will often attack supporting elements that are not as strong as the person himself the evil inclination will strike first at our vulnerabilities and weaknesses these verses fortify our defenses in addition we arouse great spiritual light to strengthen those who support the righteous in their endeavor to reveal the light of the Torah to all the world 99 therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew of the vein because he touched the hollow of Yaakov's thigh in the sinew of the vein it is forbidden to enjoy it or even to give it to a dog he asks why is it called the sinew of the vein had Nash he answers the sinew seduces had Minashem and from serving their master there lies the evil inclination 100 when it Angel wrestled with Yaakov he could not find a weak place in his body through which to overcome Yaakov because the parts of his body were all strong and without weakness and the clipper takes hold only in a place of want and weakness what did he do then he touched the hollow of his thigh the sinew of the vein his own kind that is the evil inclination which is his own kind and there is a place of the evil inclination from where it comes to harm people 101 for that reason the Torah reads therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew of the vein the friend said that a man's body parts allude to higher places if the member is good it draws goodness if it be evil it draws evil thus each animal member we eat strengthens the corresponding member of the man who eats it assuredly the sinew of the vein strengthens the evil inclination which is its own kind and therefore the children of Israel do not eat it but the heathen nations may eat it as they are of the side and kind of their angels Samael for it strengthens their hearts 102 man has 248 members in his body corresponding to the 248 positive commandments in the Torah and to the 248 angels with whom the Shechinah is clothed named after their master 103 there are 365 sinews corresponding to 365 prohibited precepts and the sinew of the vein is one of them they correspond to the 365 days of the year that is together with the 10 penitentiary days the ninth of A.B. being one of them it corresponds to the angel Samael who is one of the 365 angels ruling over the 365 days of the year the ninth of A.B. is one of the days of the year and the sinew of the vein is one of the 365 sinews both belong to the same category thus the Torah reads therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew of the vein the particle et that here includes the ninth of A.B. when it is forbidden to eat and drink being in the same category as the sinew of the vein 104 the holy one blessed be he saw it all and there is a hint to Yaakov in the verse and there wrestled a man with him all the days of the year and with all of Yaakov's members but found no place to hold onto but the sinew of the vein immediately Yaakov's strength diminished among the day of the year he found the ninth of A.B. when Samael was stronger and we were sentenced and the temple destroyed he who eats on the ninth of A.B. eats as if of the sinew of the vein Rabbi says had the strength of Yaakov's thigh not weakened. Yaakov would have prevailed and Esau's power would have been broken above and below 105 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion with the verse as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain so was the appearance of the brightness round about this was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of Hashem and when I saw it I fell upon my face Yashiskel 128 we have already studied this verse yet come and behold it is written and there arose not a prophet since in Israel. Like Moshe Devarim 3410 he asks what is the difference between Moshe and the other prophets he answers Moshe looked into a clear mirror Zeir and the other prophets beheld only a clouded mirror then looked Moshe heard the prophecy standing and his power was strengthened he understood the matter thoroughly as it is written manifestly and not in dark speeches Bimidbar 128 the other prophets fell upon their faces at the time of prophecy and became weak because they could not understand it. Clearly this was because he touched the hollow of Yaakov's thigh and he limped upon his thigh 106 no prophet knew what the Holy One blessed be he was destined to do to Esau except the prophet Obadiah who was a proselyte from the side of Esau he understood clearly what pertained to Esau yet his strength did not diminish as recorded in the book of Obadiah 107 this is why the other prophets were weakened and could not perceive and grasp the prophecy as they ought the reason is that he touched the hollow of Yaakov's thigh in the sinew of the vein he drew and sucked away the power of the thigh the power of the thigh broke leaving him limping on his thigh and all the prophets in the world limited in their conception and understanding come and behold all the prophets except Moshe did not understand things clearly 108 there is no one to support the students of the Torah to give them money for their needs in their pockets and thereby strengthen them the Torah is forgotten with every generation and its power is daily diminished because the students of the Torah have no support the secret of he limped upon his thigh is that no one
not support the Torah that is provided for those who are occupied in its study they strengthen the serpent by giving it legs on which to stand for the other side is built on lack and holiness 110 come and behold how much deceit and crookedness did that writer of the serpent's avail employ against Yaakov that night he knew well the verse the voice is Yaakov's voice but the hands are the hands of Ezov Bershi 2722 which means that if the voice of Yaakov the voice of the Torah is Interrupted power is transferred to the hands of Esau. He therefore searched on every side to harm Yaakov and stop the voice of his Torah. 111. He found him strong in every respect. He saw that his arms on this and that side, Chesed and Vira called Abraham and its are strong. He saw the body, the secret of Yaakov, who connects the two arms, strengthened between them. He saw the power of his Torah strong in every respect and was afraid lest he would not prevail against him. What did he do? At once he touched the hollow of his thigh, the supports of the Torah. He employed cunning against him, saying, Now that the supports of the Torah are broken, the Torah can no longer be strong, and their father's words shall be fulfilled. The voice is Yaakov's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau, and, and it shall come to pass when you shall have the dominance that you shall break his yoke from off your neck. Bershi 2740, 112. He acted craftily against Yaakov for in order to break the power of the Torah Ezov grew stronger when he saw he could not hurt the Torah he weakened those who supported its students for when there is no support to be found for the students of the Torah there will be none of Yaakov's voice but the hands will be the hands of Ezov 113 when Yaakov saw this he struck and overpowered him at dawn until he blessed him and confirmed to him the blessing saying your name shall be called no more Yaakov but Yisrael Bershi 3229 this means your name is no longer Yaakov which indicates deceit as it is written for he has supplanted have Yaakov me these two times Bershi 2736 but Yisrael which means with pride and might for no one can prevail against you for the name Yisrael indicates pride and authority as it is written for you have contended have Sarita with Elohim and with men and have prevailed 114 come and behold the serpent releases many armies to all sides of the in the world among men it is incumbent upon us then to Maintain the sinew of the vein because although the rider of the serpent's avail approached it it has not lost its color and is still intact 115 it behooves us to increase the power of holiness in the world and to show that you have contended with Elohim and with men and have prevailed when he sees that the sinew of the vein is intact as light is drawn on it to preserve it and the place is not consumed that is if people refrain from eating it then the power and vigor of Samael is broken. And he is unable to harm the children of Yaakov thus the inhabitants of the world cannot eat the sinew of the vein and enjoy it. 116 Rabbi Yesesava explained that the verse touched the hollow of Yaakov's thigh is similar to the verse whoever touches the dead body of any man that has died. Bimidbar 19.13 both refer to impurity because Samael has defiled that place the sinew of the vein and no enjoyment may be derived from an unholy place particularly at the side of defilement Samael. Has touched the place the Torah does not add more than for he touched as in he touched the hollow of his thigh which is similar to and whatever the unclean person touches shall be unclean of it. 22 hence we learned that Samael defiled this place by touching it. Blessed be the merciful one who gave the Torah to Israel to merit this world and the world to come as it is written length of days in her right hand and in her left hand are riches and honor. Mishle 316 section 8 and bowed to the ground. Rabbi Lazar asks a question regarding the title verse and its implication that Yaakov bowed to Esau who was of the side of another god. This leads to a reinterpretation of the verse revealing that Yaakov actually offered praise to God when kneeling before Esau. Similarly, the blessed greeting that King David sent Nabal a sorcerer spoken of in the books of the prophets is also often misconstrued. This blessing was not addressed to Nabal as Nabal thought but rather to God through the light of the Zohar we learn that both Yaakov and David were righteous and all their deeds were for the glory of their creator. The relevance of this passage a literal reading of biblical scripture completely falsifies the spiritual truth and inner meaning of the stories thus we must refrain from passing judgment in life until we discern the true meaning that is always concealed beneath the surface the wisdom and discretion to restrain judgment are imbued into our awareness we also receive the willpower to direct our own consciousness towards the creator when temptations and dark forces confront us in life 117 and he passed before them and bowed to the ground seven times Rabbi Lazar quoted the verse for you shall worship no other El for Hashem whose name is jealous is a jealous El Shema 3414 he asked how could Yaakov the greatest of the patriarchs the one chosen to be the perfect portion of the holy one blessed be he and the one very close to him bow before this evil Esau who stands on the side of another elf for bowing to him is the same as bowing to another elf. You may find the answer by referring to the saying that when the fox is in the ascendant bow to him there is a parable describing a time when the fox reigns over the animals although the fox is the smallest of the beasts everyone bows before it and here too you might say that Yaakov bowed to Esav because the hour was favorable for him this however is not so for Esau is considered as another elf and Yaakov would never bow to that side and portion 118 he answers it is written and thus shall you say to him a hearty greeting live to the living one peace be both to you and peace to your house and peace to all that you have Ishmael 256 he asks if it is forbidden to give the first greeting to wicked people why did David said this to the wicked Nabal he said he said this to the holy one blessed be he in order to connect Nabal with the living one the holy one blessed be he Thus the verse to the living one was addressed to the holy one blessed be he and not to Nabal although Nabal thought it was addressed to him 119 similarly Israel bowed himself upon the bed's head Bershi 4731 he asks did he bow to his son no he bowed to the place where the Shechinah rested she was at the head of the bed for the Shechinah is found near the head of the Ilir too he passed over before them which means that the supernal Shechinah went before him this is the supernal guardian who kept him when Yaakov saw her walking in front of him he said it is time to bow before the holy one blessed be he who went before him 120 he knelt and bowed seven times until he came near to his brother it is not written he bowed himself before Esau but when he saw the holy one blessed be he walking in front of him he bowed before him this indicated that he was not paying respect or worshipping someone else all was done appropriately happy are the righteous whose Every deed is for the glory of their master so as not to deviate right or left from the straight and middle path section 9 and embraced him and fell on his neck. There are many methods by which scripture conveys obscure allusions. Rabbi Yitzhak offers the example of the title verse in conjunction with but the wicked are like the troubled sea. This we learn contains an indication that the seed of Esau would destroy one of the two temples. Rabbi Abba then expounds. Yaakov's eventual prevailing over Esau's success was granted by the world above without whose permission no power can be exerted in the physical realm. The relevance of this passage our egos perpetrate the illusion that we are in full control of our lives when in reality we are subject to dark forces created by our own self-involved behavior. This deception keeps us ignorant of the negative inclination and of the spiritual tools that can eradicate it only the light of the creator can. Enlighten and strengthen us in the struggle to overthrow our dark side alone we remain convinced that we are captains of our fate until chaos strikes and leaves us stunned vulnerable and broken the light of this passage internalizes these spiritual truths deepening our connection to the mystical power of the Zohar and drawing divine assistance from worlds on high 121 and Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck live next Bershi 334 the word neck is written without the letter yet it is written and kissed him and they wept Rabbi Yitzhak said but the wicked are like the troubled sea which cannot be still and whose waters cast up mire and dirt Yeshayah 5720 this verse has already been explained how many deep mysteries are there in the words of the Torah they are different from each other yet all is one 122 but the wicked are like the troubled sea which cannot be still this verse refers to Esau all of whose deeds were sinful and wicked he was not Sincere in his approach to Yaakov he fell upon his neck namely the one neck for the letter Yud is missing which implies the plural form next of Jerusalem which is the neck of the world the scripture reads and fell on his neck and not on his neck with a Yud for the temple was destroyed twice first by Babylonians and then by the seed of Esau the result is that Esau besieged and destroyed Jerusalem only once therefore it is written and fell on his neck in the singular without a Yud
Because his father was still alive and he could not kill him 126 Rabbi Abba said assuredly Ezov's anger was weakened when he saw Yaakov because Ezov's minister agreed with him accepting and affirming the blessings thus Ezov could not vent his anger because everything in this world depends on the world above and whatever is agreed upon above is also accepted below and so there is no government below until power is given from above moreover everything is interdependent for whatever is done. In this world depends on what is done of high section 10 let my lord I pray you pass over before his servant Rabbi Lazar explains the title quotation as Yaakov's wish to save his blessings for future generations in their struggle against the nations of the world Yaakov rejected partnership with Ezov and accepted subjugation we are told knowing that in the world to come he would rule over the mount of Ezov the relevance of this passage our tendency is to Sacrifice tomorrow's rewards for immediate ego gratification this tendency derives from our evil inclination which seeks to influence us in all our endeavors when we succumb to urges from this dark side our evil inclination creates a partnership with us tainting and defiling all our efforts impatience is a powerful form of reactive self-indulgent behavior and usually underlies our decisions to accept this partnership patience is divine and it is nurtured in us as we read this section 127. Let my lord I pray you pass over before his servant and I will lead on slowly Beersheet 3314 according to Rabbi Lazar this agrees with what we have already said Yaakov did not wish to avail himself at this time of the first blessings his father bestowed on him not one had yet been fulfilled because he was reserving them to the end of days when his descendants would need to utilize them in the fight against the other nations of the world 128 thus when Ezov said let us take our journey. And let us go Beersheet 3312 let us divide the world between us and rule over it together Yaikov replied let my lord I pray you pass over before his servant meaning let Ezov be the first to exercise his dominion over the world let my lord pass I as an indication of priority as in and their king passes on before them and Hashem at the head of them Mishnah 213 Yaikov said to him you can be the first to rule over the world and I will lead on slowly and raise myself for the world to come. And for the end of days the days that pass slowly 129 according to the pace of the cattle also work he asks what is meant by the work he answers it is a dim mirror the Nukba of Zeir and through which all work in the world is done that goes before me refers to the Nukba always means before Hashem Zeir and according to the pace of the children alludes to the secret of the cherubs to point at the secret of the faith the Nukba to whom Yaikov cleaved 130 until I come to my Lord to Seir Yaikov said to him I shall suffer your exile and subjugation until my time to rule over the Mount of Ezov is come as it is written and liberators shall ascend upon Mount Zion to judge the mountain of Ezov and the kingdom shall be Hashem's Obadiah 121 section 11 and build him a house Rabbi Shia leads a discussion on God's creation of the house of the world this highly metaphorical discourse describes the process of creation from the midst of the house we are told a tree visible only by day reaches up into heaven and the house is watered by the tree when night falls and the doors of the house are closed a flame erupts out of the darkness while a myriad on either side chant praises and hymns a herald ascends to make proclamations and and the dimension of light in the upper world enters and the house is lit by six lights of mercy from which flow the rivers that water all the animals of the field God builds and perfects this house as long as the energy of prayer sends from below in proper form the discussion and turns to God's nightly protection of the city from the other side and is guarding of the sanctuary from the primordial serpent Rabbi Lazar then concludes the discussion by explaining the complete perfection of Yaakov both above and below the relevance of this passage using the language of metaphor the Zohar draws upon mystical power of the Hebrew letters to connect us to the primordial forces of creation which sustain and protect the world through this passage we draw the energy of creation into our lives for renewal healing and protection 131 and Yaakov turned it to Sukkot and built him a house and made booths have Sukkot for his cattle therefore the name of the place is called Sukkot Beersheet 3317 Rabbi Shia opened the discussion with the verse a model poem for Solomon unless Hashem builds the house unless Hashem keeps the city Tehillim 1271 come and behold when the Holy One Blessed be his E.I.R. and been desired to create the world meaning to build the face of the Nukva called work he released and not from the rough spark it flashed in the darkness remained up high and then descended below that darkness shown in a hundred ways in the thinnest paths and broadest ways which became the house of the world 132 that house is the center of everything which means it is in the central column of all roads and paths the Nukva has many doors and hallways around the high end. Holy places where the birds of the sky nest each according to its species in the center there is a huge tree which is Z.E.I.R. and that P.U.R.S. plenty upon the house it has many branches and fruits for everyone the tree reaches to the clouds of heaven and is hidden behind three mountains underneath these three mountains it comes out rises upwards and descends 133 this house the Nukva received two types of lights from Z.E.I.R. and one it is watered by him namely the illumination of Chakma referred. To his watering two Zeir Anpin stores within the house many unidentified supernal treasures that were lights of Chesedim by this the house is constructed and built the tree Zeir Anpin is visible during the day and hidden at night while the house the Nukba rules by night and is hidden by day 134. When darkness falls the Nukba is in power and she is bound to it she rules because she lacks Chesedim and shines with Chakma all her doors are closed on all sides which means that all the lights are frozen and there is no opening through which any light can be revealed many spirits of righteous people soar in the air desirous to know namely receive Chakma and enter the Nukba they come among the birds to receive testimony and then roam and see whatever they can see 135 the closing of all openings continues until the darkness is stirred to which the Nukba is bound and one flame is produced which strikes open the doors and cleaves rocks with heavy hammers the clip the flame moves. Up and down and strikes the world sounds are heard above and below 136 a crier then ascends attaches himself to the ear and proclaims the ear comes from the pillar of cloud of the inner altar and when it emerges it spreads out in all directions with thousands on its left side and myriads on its right then the crier stands firm and proclaims in a strong voice many chant songs and render homage two doors are open one on the south for the light of Chesedim and the other on the north for the light of Chakma 137 this house the Nukba ascends and attaches itself to the right and left sides of Zeir Anpin while hymns are sung and praises offered on high then Zeir Anpin silently enters and the house is lit up by six lights of Hasidim Shesed Burit Tiferet Net Sash Hot and Yezid which spread splendor in every direction Chesedim included in Chakma rivers flow from it the secret of the illumination of Chakma included in Chesedim to water the animals of the field as it is. Written they give drink to every wild beast the wild asses quench their thirst Tehillim 10411 they sing until the day rises when daylight breaks the star signs and their followers all begin to sing praises and chants as it is written when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of Elohim shouted for joy Eo 387 138 come and behold it is written unless Hashem builds the house they who build it labor in vain Tehillim 1271 Hashem is the supernal king Zeir Anpin who is constantly building and perfecting the house when does he bestow plenty on it when worship is raised with proper attention from below 139 unless Hashem keeps the city when does this happen this occurs at nightfall when armed parties from the other side hover and roam the world when the gates are closed and guarded on all sides the doors remain shut lest an uncircumcised and unclean person approaches the sanctuary as it is written for henceforth there shall no more come into you the uncircumcised. And the unclean Yeshua 521 for in the future the Holy One blessed be he will remove them from the face of the earth 140 he asks who are the uncircumcised and who are the unclean he answers they are all one the same one who seduced Adam and his wife Adam and his wife followed him the primordial serpent and brought death to the whole world he defiles the house the Nukba until the Holy One blessed be he shall remove him from the world the Nukba therefore unless Hashem keeps the city. Assuredly the watchman stays awake in vain 141 and Yaakov turned it to Sukkot he turned it to Bani to receive the portion of the faith the Nukba as it is written so Ezov returned that day on his way to Seir and Yaakov turned it to Sukkot each traveled to his own side Ezov to the side of Seir which is a foreign woman a strange El Yaakov to Sukkot the supernal faith which is Bani 142 and built him a house has a similar meaning to the verse house of Yaakov Yeshua. 
25 which refers to the mukbah according to Rabbi Lazar this is because he composed the evening service the mukbah as was befitting to her and he made boots for his cattle namely other boots have so go to keep them this is his own portion 143 and Yaakov came to Shalom lit whole because he was then whole in every respect both in Chakmah and Chesedim as has been explained it is written in Shalom also is his tabernacle have so go 763 this verse has been explained it pertains to the mystery of attaining perfection through the central column of Zeir and been called Yaakov and to Sukkot which is the mukbah when he was whole faith joined him which is the mukbah and when he was adorned in the place worthy of him meaning the central column the tabernacle which is the mukbah was adorned with him and then in Shalom ASLO is his tabernacle applied to her as well because he was perfected by the fathers and his sons he was then considered whole perfected above and below whole. In heaven and whole on earth he explains he is whole above in Zeir and for he comprises the fathers being the glory of Israel encompassing Abraham and its hot being Chesed and Gura and below in the mukbah through his holy sons the twelve tribes who are the chariot of the mukbah thus he is perfected in heaven in Zeir and for which reason it says and Yaakov came to Shalom and he was perfected on earth in the mukbah which it is now said in Shalom also is his tabernacle. Section 12 You shall not plow with an ox and an ass together an ox and an ass together represents the unification of the defiled spirits of the other side against man this is applied to the struggle between Shimon and Shamer conflict in which Shimon who was under the astrological sign of the ox fought Shamer of the side of the ass to prevent the two from joining we learned that Shimon first brought the blood of circumcision on the males and slew them just as God did to the Egyptians who represent asses through Moshe's when Yosef the ox was removed from them in the final exile we are told Yaakov and Yosef will rise against Esau and prevail the relevance of this passage unity is recognized as the supreme power in our world united evil can easily defeat this united good therefore the only way to defeat unified evil is through the unification of the good and the righteous through the cleansing power of circumcision this passage creates disunity and separation within. The unseen evil forces lurking in our midst 144 next it is written and Dinah the daughter of Leah went out this has already been explained by the friends come and behold innumerable grades are divided above some belong to holiness and others to the other side as it is written Elohim made the one as well as the other Kahilat 714 each is different from the other some pertaining to Chisa and some to judgments there are different kinds of animals trying to gain mastery over each other and Devour pray each according to its kind 145 from the side of the defiled spirit many grades divide all of them harbor enmity toward holiness the ones against the others as it is written you shall not plow with an ox and an ass together Devarim 2210 for when they are together they ruin the world 146 come and behold all that the grades of defilement crave is to damage the holy grades they all lurk in wait to damage the holy Yaakov first a serpent bit him as it is written he touched the hollow of his thigh which refers to the minister of ESAB who rides a serpent then an ass bit him that is Shem the son of Camer let ass the right side of the clip 147 when the serpent bit him he himself stood against him when that ass bit him Shimon and Levi who come from the side of strict judgment fought the ass charging on all sides until he surrendered before them as it is written and they slew Shammer and Shem his son with the edge of the sword bear she 3426 Shimon whose astrological sign was Taurus ox Bura and the left side of holiness attacked Shammer the right side of the clip and was hostile towards him to prevent the ox and ass of the clip from joining Shimon is his adversary and not Yaakov 148 they all brought accusations against Yaakov but he was delivered from them and later he ruled over them and came the ox Yosef who perfected himself among the asses the Egyptians he ruled over they were all of the side of the clip of an ass he Explained Yosef is an ox and the Egyptians are asses of whom the scripture says whose flesh is as the flesh of asses Yachiskel 2320 149 therefore the sons of Yaakov later fell among the asses the Egyptians because an ox joined them Yosef through whom an ox and an ass were joined together and they bit Israel's flesh and marrow as it is the nature of the ass to bite and break bones until Levi was again aroused to scatter the asses that is he separated the ox from the ass in order to subdue them he broke their strength and removed the ox from there as it is written and Moshe took the bones of Yosef with him Shemot 1319 Moshe being a Levite and Yosef the ox that joined them 150 come and behold on the first occasion when Shimon came to fight with Shammer he brought blood upon them the blood of circumcision and they slew all the males Bereshit 3425 the Holy One blessed be he did the same by the Levite Moshe to the asses the Egyptians first he brought upon them it. Plague of blood and then Hashem slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Shemot 1315 regarding Shammer the father of Shem it is written and all their wealth and all their little ones. Bear sheep 3429 and their animals as it is written their sheep and their oxen and their asses and that which was in the city and that which was in the field regarding the other asses the Egyptians it is written jewels of silver and jewels of gold and garments. Shemot 1235 which corresponds to the wealth. Here it is also written and a mixed multitude went up also with them. Ibid 38 which corresponds to the little ones mentioned the flocks and herds of it that correspond to their sheep and their oxen. 151 Shimon rose against Shammer as the father of Shem who was not joined with an ox. Levi rose against all the asses even those joined with an ox like the Egyptians they all came to join Yaakov and prepared to bite him but he withstood and subdued them through his sons. 152 he asks. Now in the last exile that Esau is biting him and his sons who shall rise against him he replies Yaakov and Yosef will rise against him the one on this side and the other on that side Yaakov on the right and Yosef on the left as it is written and the house of Yaakov shall be fire and the house of Yosef flame and the house of Esau for stubble Obadiah 118 153 and the terror of Elohim was upon the cities that were round about them and they did not pursue after the sons of Yaakov. Bereshit 355 Rabbi Yossi said they all gathered to fight them but while they were girding their weapons they took fright and dropped them therefore they did not chase the sons of Yaakov section 13 put away the strange Elohim while walking Rabbi Shishkiah questions Rabbi Yehuda as to why the crown of Malcham was considered the crown of an idol and an abomination and why it was permitted to be set on David's head after Rabbi Yehuda explains that the image of it. Idol on the crown was broken, thus making it permissible for where Rabbi Yitzhak proceeds to interpret the title verse. He reveals that Yaakov hid the idolatrous gold and silver images so that his people could not derive any benefit from these representations of false deities. There follows a discussion of man's responsibility to thank and praise God for his miracles and his goodness. This is why Yaakov alone prepared the altar at Bethel, although his sons were with him. Yaakov alone suffered the tribulations that run throughout his story, making him worthy and deserving of the task. The relevance of this passage it is a man's natural tendency to worship his own ego and credit himself for all of his accomplishments. This is true idol worshiping. The concept of praising and thanking God is a code denoting the need for true appreciation and awareness of the existence of the Creator. As beneficence appreciation is for our own benefit and not in any way for the Creator who has no need or Desire for praise and thanks appreciation and awareness are spiritual forces that help to protect all that we have received from negative entities. The goal of an evil entity is to lower our guard and make us vulnerable when there is no consciousness of the Creator's role in our good fortune. Dark forces can loot us of our spiritual light. This manifests physically as the loss of blessing whether in relationships, health or financial prosperity. This passage stirs appreciation for the Creator within. Us this gratitude is derived through Yaakov who recognized and warned his children about the idols in their midst. 154 put away the strange Elohim Bereshit 352 that they took from Shem vessels of silver and gold upon which were engraved the images of their deities. Rabbi Yehuda said these were the images of strange Elohim made of silver and gold and not vessels with their images. Yaakov hid them there so that they would not derive benefit from idolatry. A man should never derive benefit. From it 155 as Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shishkiah were walking along the road Rabbi Shishkiah asked why is it written and he took the crown of Makam from off his head and its weight was a talent of gold with the precious stones and it was set on David's head 2 Shmuel 1230 we have learned that Milcom was the abominable idol of the children of
Called an abomination 157, Rabbi Yitzhak said that the verse put away the strange Elohim that are among you refers to other women who when taken captive brought with them all their jewels thus it is written and they gave to Yaakov all the strange Elohim which are the women and all their jewels and their deities of silver and gold and Yaakov hid them the gold and silver so that his people would derive no benefit whatsoever from them the aspects of idolatry 158 come and behold. How much Yaakov was a perfected man and how he cleaved to the Holy One blessed be he it is written and let us arise and go up to Bethel and I will make there an altar to El who answers me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way on which I went. Bear she 353 at once they gave to Yaakov who before from this we learn that it is incumbent on man to praise the Holy One blessed be he and give thanks to him for all the miracles and goodness he did by him this is the meaning of the verse. And was with me in the way on which I went. 159 come and behold first it is written and let us arise and go up to Bethel in the plural because he counted his sons with him that it is written and I will make there an altar in the singular and not and we will make because he excluded his sons from this act why because it was for him alone to do it Yaakov surely composed the evening prayer the correction of the and built the altar the correction of the it was for him to do. Not for his sons for his children were not born until after he had fled from his brother and had gone through the troubles that followed as it is written and was with me in the way on which I went thus he did not include them in preparing the altar but said and I will make there an altar instead of we will make 160 rabbi laser said from this we learned that whoever received a miracle should give thanks and whoever ate bread should say grace and not the person who ate nothing yeah, then said I will make an altar and not we will make section 14 and he built there an altar the Zohar tells us that Yaakov is beginning a very difficult spiritual journey which involves enjoining the two worlds of Zer Enpin and Malchut here Yaakov is coming full circle completing his journey and thereby unifying Zer Enpin and Malchut the relevance of this passage passion and enthusiasm for spiritual wisdom and growth are easily aroused when one begins to walk the spiritual path however when the inevitable obstacle surface to test our commitment and shed light on our negative qualities so that we can confront and extract them from our nature we lose the fire and most of us fail to complete journey it's much easier to start a new search elsewhere and feel new passion again than it is to confront the dark side of our nature and complete our journey constant seeking however will not enjoy the two spiritual worlds as it delivers short lived Passion and fails to provide long-term fulfillment the evil inclination will always stand by us and help rationalize and justify our quitting and giving up in response to Zohar versus Hiram give us the energy and will power to complete our path and finish what we start so that we can achieve true and eternal contentment 161 and he built there an altar Beersheet 357 come and behold it is written that he built there an altar but not that he offered libations and sacrifices this is because he completed the grade worthy of perfection and altar to Hashem means he fixed the lower grade the Nukba and attached it to the upper grade Zeir and thus and he built there an altar is the lower grade the Nukba to Hashem is the upper grade Zeir and and called the place El Betel which I asked the name he gave the Nukba is that of a supernal Bina for when the Nukba shone from Zeir and the daughter the Nukba became like her mother Bina therefore Yadikeo he named her El after her. Mother and all is one 162 because there the Elohim was lit were revealed to him. This verse signifies that angels were revealed in the plural and not in the singular. Why did he call the altar El Betel? Because they are found only with the Shechinah. These seventy angels are always with her and seventy thrones stand around the Shechinah. Wherever angels are found, the Shechinah is revealed. Therefore the scripture says because there the Elohim were revealed to him in an open place. The Mukba as it is written and behold Hashem stood above it. Bear she 2813 namely upon the ladder which is the Mukba section 15 and Elohim went up from him. Your Rabbi Shimon discusses Yaakov's unique and privileged position as revealed by the title quotation because Yaakov encompasses all the patriarchs. He is a holy chariot to Zer by himself. Indeed his perfection was completed by the name Israel which the Shechinah bestowed upon him. We learn of the great. Good fortune of the children of Israel who alone among nations have God to receive their prayers and petitions. The relevance of this passage, a reading of this section, helps elevate us to experience some of the perfection embodied by the patriarchs, inspiring us to follow the path of righteousness and summon down more like 163. And Elohim went up from him in the place where he talked with him. Bereshit 3513. Rabbi Shimon said, Here we learn that Yaakov, together with the other patriarchs, became a holy chariot to Hashem. Come and behold, Yaakov is a supernal holy chariot to Zeir and shining on the moon. The Nukba, he is a chariot by himself because he includes the patriarchs, Jesus and Gura, as Typhoret includes them both. This is the meaning of the verse. And Elohim went up from him as someone alighting from his chariot. 164. He began the discussion with the verse for what nation is there so great that has Elohim so near to them as Hashem? Our Elohim is in all things that we. Call upon him for Devarim 44 come and behold how fond the Holy One blessed be he is of Israel for no nation or tongue among all the heathen people in the world will have Elohim to receive their prayers as the Holy One blessed be he will in the future receive the prayers and petitions of Israel in their hour of need when they pray for the sake of their great alone the Shechinah that is whenever their prayer is for the perfecting of the Shechinah 165 come and behold the Holy One blessed be he called Yaakov by the name Israel namely that is the Shechinah did as it is written your name shall not be called any more Yaakov but Israel shall be your name and he called his name who gave him that name the Shechinah did as in and he called to Moshe written with a small Aleph which is the Shechinah it is also written and Elohim said to him Bereshit 3510 which is a name for the Shechinah 166 we explained that after he achieved perfection he was raised in his great and was Perfected by that name therefore and he called his name Israel has already been explained section 16 Yaakov, Israel Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Lazar discuss the issue of Yaakov's two names Yaakov and Israel Rabbi Lazar explains why Yaakov is only sometimes called Israel while after Abram's renaming he is always referred to as Abraham Abraham's original name was imperfect whereas Yaakov's name denoted a higher level of spirituality the relevance of this passage the name is a link between the body and soul we connect to our name and soul which helps us fulfill our mission in this world 167 as Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Yossi were walking together Rabbi Yossi said what you said is true that Yaakov is the most perfect of the fathers he includes all sides namely right and left for that reason he was called Israel as it is written your name shall not be called any more Yaakov but Israel shall be your name and he called his name Israel. Bereshit 3510 Why then he insisted does the Holy One blessed be he repeatedly call him Yaakov as he was commonly called before what then is the meaning of your name shall not be called any more Yaakov 168 he replies you have spoken well this is a good question he then quoted the verse Hashem shall go forth as a mighty man he shall stir up harder like a man of war Yeshua 4213 which has already been explained yet come and behold it is written as a mighty man instead of a mighty man and like a man of war instead of a man of war 169 he explains we learn that Hashem refers uniformly to mercy and the name of the Holy One blessed be he is yet as it is written I am Hashem that is my name Yeshua 428 yet we see that he is sometimes called Elohim which everywhere alludes to judgment whenever there are many righteous in the world his name is yet and he is called mercy but when the wicked multiply in the world his name is Elohim and he is Thus called when Yaakov is not among his enemies or in a foreign country he is called Israel but when he is among foes or out of Israel he is called Yaakov 170 he said to him the matter is not fully explained because it is written shall not be called any more yet we do call him Yaakov when he is among enemies or in a foreign land come and study the verse and Yaakov dwelt in the land in which his father had sojourned in the land of CNA and Bereshit 371 he was not in a foreign land but he is nevertheless called Yaakov 171 he replied I said in the beginning that just as the Holy One blessed be he is sometimes called Yaakov and sometimes Elohim according to the grade so Yaakov is sometimes called Israel and sometimes Yaakov all according to certain grades and the words shall not be called any more Yaakov mean that he will not have this name only Yaakov but two names Yaakov and Isra
Manifestation involved strain and death which is later followed by relief and ease thus Rachel's death after the birth of Benjamin was a necessary sacrifice in order that the Shechina could resume her proper place similarly on Rosh Hashanah the world passes under severe judgment followed by relief forgiveness and atonement on Yom Kippur the reason for this Rabbi Lazer explains is that beginning is from the left side which brings harsh judgment until the right side is aroused and provides relief however for idolaters the reverse is true God shall first treat them gently and then later he will destroy them the relevance of this passage each new beginning in our lives represents the seed of all that will follow the birth of a child the outset of a new business enterprise the start of a marriage these are all examples of beginnings through the mystical words of the sages appearing in this ancient text we help infuse our beginnings with extraordinary light and positive energy so that the seed of all that comes afterward is healthy and strong we derive the strength to endure through the strains and obstacles of beginnings and to accelerate the arrival of relief and fruition 173 while they were walking Rabbi Yossi said to Rabbi Lazer we learned that when Rachel died the Shechina who needed the twelve tribes to achieve perfection took her house he asks why did Rachel die at that time was this connected to her death he replied the reason was to enable the Shechina to be properly crowned and become a joyful mother of children Tehillim 1139 with Binyamin the Shechina began to take the house and achieve perfection he is of the aspect of Yezid of the twelve tribes and is therefore the first to perfect the Shechina therefore the standard of Binyamin is always facing west as Yezid is considered to be of the west and not any other side 174 with Binyamin the Shechina begins to achieve perfection through of the twelve tribes through him the kingdom of Heaven begins to manifest itself on earth as the first king in Israel shall was his descendant. It is a mystery that every manifestation begins with difficulties and contains the sentence of death, but the difficulties are later resolved. 175 When the Sheshanah desired to be perfected and take over the house with the twelve tribes, completed judgment was exacted from Rachel and she died later. She prepared to assume her proper place. Similarly, when the kingdom wished to establish itself on earth, it started with judgment against Shal, who was then killed on the mountains of Gilboa. According to his deeds, only after this judgment was exacted from Shal, the kingdom established and settled on David. 176 Come and behold, all beginnings are hard but are followed by relief. Thus on Rosh Hashanah, everyone in the world is judged according to his own actions and comes relief and forgiveness and atonement on Yom Kippur. This is followed by the Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles, the reason. Is that every beginning has the aspect of the left whose judgment is severe, but later the right is aroused as it is written, his left hand is under my head, and then his right hand embraces me. Sure, Hashirim 26, then relief comes 177. The reverse is true for the idolatrous people of the world in the future. The Holy One, blessed be, he will deal with them gently at first, but afterward with severe judgment. This is the meaning of the verse Hashem shall go forth as a mighty man, he shall stir up. Harder like a man of war, first comes Hashem the merciful, then he comes as a mighty man, not a real mighty man, and later like a man of war, not a real man of war. Finally, judgment will be given against them, and he will destroy them as it is written, he shall cry indeed, roar, he shall show himself mighty against his foes. Yeshayah 4213, and then shall Hashem go out and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Zechariah 143, and who is this that comes from Edom with? Crimson garments from Basra, Yeshayah 631, 178, and it came to pass as her soul was departing, for she died that she called his name Beno and I, but his father called him Baniam and Bershi 3518. Rabbi Yehuda began the discussion with the verse Hashem is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, he knows them that trust in him. Nashem 17, happy is the lot of one who is strengthened by the Holy One, blessed be he, because the stronghold of the Holy One, blessed be he, is indeed a stronghold as it is. Written Hashem is good, as in good to all Tehillim 1459, a stronghold of salvations as it is written, he is the saving strength of his anointed Tehillim 288, and the day of trouble is when trouble comes and the other nations attack Israel. Section 18, if you faint in the day of adversity, the rabbis show us that it is incumbent upon man to walk the path of righteousness and to hold tightly to the Torah. This way we retold the evil inclination becomes our. Advocate rather than our accuser and rises to vouch for us before God the sacrifice of the Hegot on Yom Kippur follows this principle the sacrifice engages the evil inclination so that he will ascend and deliver favorable testimony to God this principle we learn is seen in the example of Rachel's death which was a punishment for Yaakov because Yaakov did not fulfill his vow to God and because he uttered a causeless curse when he said to Laban anyone with whom you find your Elohim the evil inclination accused Rachel during a time of danger and she perished the relevance of this passage spiritual like gleams on this page cleansing us of curses we have uttered in the past a portion of this light is given to the evil inclination so that his words of praise replace his condemnation in the supernal courts protecting us from judgments caused by our own negative deeds 179 come and behold he asks in the verse if you faint in the day of adversity your strength is small Mishle 2410 What is the meaning of you faint you please a man whose hands do not firmly hold on to the Holy One blessed be he to receive strength from him a man can be strengthened by stronger association with the Torah for whoever is strengthened by the Torah holds more firmly to the tree of life thereby giving power and strength to the congregation of Israel the Sheshina 180 but if he relaxes his hold on the Torah then he faints and if he is faint in his hold on the Torah then in the day of adversity his strength is small when trouble comes he presses the Sheshina which is the power of the world 181 another explanation of the phrase your strength is small is that when a man is faint in his hold on the Torah and walks a crooked path many enemies wait to oppress him in the day of adversity even his own soul his power and strength become his foes and enemy he explained the words your strength is small have tzar as your strength is an enemy have tzar which refers to his soul which reflects a man's strength 182 Rabbi Abba said that when a man walks the path of the Torah and his ways are duly straight many advocates stand ready to speak well of him he opened the discussion with the verse if there be an angel over him an intercessor one among a thousand to vouch for a man's uprightness then he is gracious to him and says deliver him from going down to the pit I have found a ransom of 3323 to 24 we should study these verses carefully is not all revealed before the Holy One blessed be he does he need an angel to announce before him good and evil 183 he answers although he knows everything he surely requires an angel to arouse mercy because when a man has good intercessors who remind the Holy One blessed be he of his merits and no one who speaks of his sins then he is gracious to him and says deliver him from going down to the pit I have found a ransom 184 come and behold this verse clarifies the matter it is written if there be an angel over him which should be sufficient yet it continues an intercessor one among a thousand we should therefore find out who he is he said this is the angel whose duty it is to be on the left side of man as it is written a thousand shall fall at your side Tehillim 917 we know this to be the left side from the following words and ten thousand at your right hand David which means that at your side which was written earlier refers to the left side 185 but one among a thousand is the evil inclination one of the thousand demons of the left side he ascends to receive permission to come down and kill but when a man walks the path of righteousness the evil inclination becomes his servant as it is written better is one lightly esteemed who owns a servant Mishle 129 he then ascends and becomes his advocate recalling his merits before the holy one blessed be he and the holy one blessed be he says deliver him from going down to the pit I have found a ransom. 186 with all that the evil inclination does not return empty handed another man is delivered to him one whose soul he may take because this man's sins are already known he is charged for them and is held ransom for the man who escaped this is the meaning of the sentence I have found a ransom to redeem him 187 another explanation of the words I have found a ransom is that the holy one blessed be he says to the angel the merit you mentioned shall be that man's ransom it will redeem him from dying and going down to Gehenna therefore it behooves a man to walk the path of truth so that his accuser shall turn into his advocate 188 similarly the children of Israel employ such means on Yom Kippur by giving the evil inclination some male goat namely a scapegoat and thus engaging it until it becomes their servant and ascends to testify before the holy one blessed be he as their intercessor Solomon said of the ev
completing his vow which he made before the Holy One, blessed be he, the accuser exacted judgment from him and demanded justice at the time when Rachel was in danger. He said to the Holy One, blessed be he, Yaakov did not fulfill his vow, although he has wealth and many sons and lacks nothing, he did not fulfill his vow made before you, and yet you have exacted no punishment. Immediately Rachel travailed and was in hard labor. Beersheet 3516 because this was a severe judgment that the angel of death exacted from him 192. He asks why was Yaakov punished in this matter? He replies, This is in accordance with the verse. If you have nothing with which to pay, why should he take away your bed from under you? Mishlei 2227. Therefore Rachel died. This was the judgment exacted by the angel of death. 193. Come and behold, what did Yaakov do when Esau came and he put the handmaids and their children foremost and Leah and her children after and Rachel and Yosef last of all? Beersheet 332. What? Prompted him to do so, he was afraid for Rachel, lest that wicked man should behold her beauty and attack him because of it. 194 It is also written, Then the handmaidens came near thee and their children, and they bowed themselves, and Leah also with her children came near and bowed themselves. Beersheet 336 The women before the men, but of Rachel the verse says, And after came Yosef near, and Rachel Yosef stood before his mother covering and concealing her, thus the words Yosef is a fruitful. Bow fruitful bow by well. Beersheet 4922 Whose body grew bigger to protect his mother by well lit an eye refers to that wicked man's eye, that man who must not cast an eye under 195. Your Rachel was punished by the evil inclination which accused her in a time of danger and punished Yaakov for his unfulfilled bow. This was harder for Yaakov than all his previous troubles. We know that Rachel died because of Yaakov from the words Rachel died by me. Beersheet 487 Surely this. Happened because of me because I tarried in fulfilling my vow 196 Rabbi Yossi said it is written a curse that is causeless shall not have low lamed Allah come home Mishlei 262 this has been interpreted as low lamed Vav to him so it would say a curse that is causeless shall come to him this teaches us that once a righteous man curses even if he did not mean to curse it is received by the evil inclination who uses it to accuse in times of danger 197 Yaakov said anyone with whom you find your Elohim let him not live Beersheet 3132 although he did not know that Rachel had stolen them the Satan who constantly abides among men heard these words and used them to accuse in a time of danger we therefore learned that a man should never open his mouth for the Satan because he takes that utterance and uses it to accuse above and below especially if the utterance came from the mouth of a righteous man or a sage Rachel was punished for two reasons because Yaakov was late. In fulfilling his vow and because of the curse he uttered section 19 and it came to pass as her soul was departing although the soul may depart the body and return during one's lifetime Rachel's soul did not return and she died before she died she named her last born child Beno and I because of the severe judgment against her Yaakov then renamed his youngest son Benjamin also to bind him to the right side just as he attached Rachel to mercy the relevance of this passage this section helps deepen our understanding of the importance of names and of their influence on our destiny through the attraction or deflection of the light we achieve a greater connection to our own name and the particular influences that it radiates 198 and it came to pass as her soul was departing for she died Rabbi Abba asked if the words as her soul was departing mean that she died why does the verse continue with the words for she died he replied the words for she died were necessary to indicate that the soul did not return to the body and she died bodily the departure of the soul is not an indication of bodily death for there are people whose souls departed and later returned to their places this is the meaning of the verses and his spirit returned to him Ishmuel 3012 and their heart departed Beersheet 4228 my soul departed Sher Hasherim 56 and until there was no soul left in him I may lash him 1717 but when Rachel's soul departed it did not return and she died 199 that she called his name Beno and I because of the severe judgment decided against her Yaakov however turned him to the right namely to Shesedim to bind the west the Nukba to the right and though he is Beno and I lit the son of sorrow of the Nukba from the aspect of rigorous judgment nevertheless he is the son of the right because the Nukba became attached to the right he therefore called him Binyamin the son of right because he attached Rachel to the right to Shesedim. 200 she was buried by the road her death and place of burial were known and she was buried by the road in an open place but the death and burial place of Leah are not recorded although the four mothers share a secret as has already been explained section 20 and Yaakov said a pillar this section explains the significance of the phrase to this day which is attached to the title quotation while Rabbi Yossi interprets this as a reference to the day when God resurrects the dead Rabbi Yehuda explains that it is a reference to the day when the children of Israel return from exile in accordance with the oath that God swore to the Shechina at that time the children of Israel will weep for Rachel as she wept for their exile and Rachel Israel and the Shechina shall rejoice together by the side of the road the relevance of this passage a reading of this section accelerates the end of exile for the children of Israel moreover this light hastens it. Final redemption and resurrection for mankind on a personal level this divine energy helps resurrect areas of our lives that have been disconnected from the light we literally gain freedom from the forces of death 201 and Yaakov set a pillar upon her grave Rabbi Yossi asked why does the scripture add the words to this day he replied because her burial place will remain uncovered until the day when the Holy One blessed be he will raise the dead thus it is said to this day the very day of resurrection 202 Rabbi Yehuda said that to this day refers to the day when the Shechina shall repatriate the children of Israel from exile to Rachel's burial place as it is written and there is hope for your future says Hashem and your children shall come back again to their own border Yermeah 3116 this is the oath the Holy One blessed be he swore to the Shechina and the children of Israel when they return from exile will stand by Rachel's grave and we bet she wept for the Exile of the children of Israel. The scripture therefore reads, They shall come with weeping and with supplications will I lease them a and for your work shall be rewarded. Ibn 15 at that time Rachel will rejoice by the road together with Israel and the Shechina has already been explained. Section 21 Reuben went now the sons of Yaakov were 12. Rabbi Yehuda discusses the power and influence of the Torah for the dead when the soul of one who labors in. The Torah departs this world it ascends by the Torah's familiar ways and the Torah preserves the body and guards it against the judgments of the other world until the day of resurrection. However when the soul of one who does not labor in the Torah leaves this world it does not know the paths to follow therefore it stumbles and receives punishment. This section also provides an explanation of Reuben's questionable actions as related in the title verse. The discussion of this issue reveals that. Reuben did not actually lie with Bilhar, rather he disarranged the couch in order to prevent the Shechina from performing her conjugal duty with Yaakov. Thus Reuben was punished, he was deprived of his birthright which was transferred to Yosef in accordance with God's wisdom. However, Reuben's merits remained intact and his descendants remained worthy of inclusion among the twelve tribes. Similarly, the actions of Eli's son recounted in the verse. Now Eli was very old, dash do not mean that he lay with the women at the entrance to the temple. Instead he detained them, preventing them from entering until the other sacrifices had been offered as was appropriate. The relevance of this passage, the quality of life we create for ourselves in the physical realm mirrors the quality of life awaiting us after our departure from this existence. Our quality of life is determined by our actions and their degree of spiritual development by the path of Torah. This section enlightens us to the power of Torah. And the path it offers the radiating light helps us clearly see the darkened corridors of this life in order to avoid traveling darkened byways in the hereafter 203 and it came to pass when Yisrael dwelt in that land that Reuben went and lay with Bilhah his father's concubine and Yisrael heard of it now the sons of Yaakov were 12 Beersheet 3522 to 23 Rabbi Lazar said when Yisrael dwelt Hedgekin in that land refers to the Shechina called land for at that time when Leah and Rachel died the Shechina became mistress of the house 204 he asks could you possibly think that Reuben lay with Bilhah he answers as long as Leah and Rachel were alive the Shechina hovered over them once they died the Shechina never departed from the house but dwelt in Bilhah's abode he asks although it was appropriate that the Shechina should be mistress of the house that is be united with Yaakov after Rachel's death why was it said that the Shechina d
His paths true but the people in the world do not know or care what they are based upon they just do walk in them because they know the ways of the Holy One blessed be he and study the Torah whoever is occupied in the study of the Torah is familiar with them and treads the ways of the Torah never deviating right or left 207 but the transgressors shall stumble in them these words refer to the wicked who do not study the Torah or care for the ways of the Holy One blessed be he or no where they are going because they do not know how to observe and do not deal with the Torah they stumble in this world and in the world to come 208 come and behold when a man who studies the Torah passes away his soul ascends through the roads and ways of the Torah which are known to those who follow the ways of the Torah in this world after they die they tread these paths in the other world 209 when those who do not study the Torah in this world those who are not familiar with it Roads and ways leave this world they do not know which way to go and they stumble because they chose ways that are not of the Torah many judgments are raised against them and they are punished 210 of you who studies the Torah it is written when you lie down it shall watch over you when you wake it shall talk to you Mishlei 622 when you lie down in the grave the Torah shall watch over you from the judgment of that world when you wake refers to the time when the Holy One blessed be he will raise spirits and souls that will resurrect the dead then it shall talk to you being an advocate for the body so that the bodies who study the Torah shall rise in a proper manner these are those who will rise first to everlasting life as it is written and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life Daniel 122 those who deal in everlasting life the Torah will awake to everlasting life 211 come and behold the bodies of all the students of the Torah will be preserved and the Torah shall protect them. The reason is that the Holy One blessed be he will arouse a wind comprised of four winds Chakma Bina Tiferet and Malchut that wind appears before those who study the Torah and revives them to everlasting life. 212 You may say that it is written of the dead that Yeshiskel resurrected come from the four winds O breath also wind Yeshiskel 379 Why then did they die again deriving no benefit from that wind which comprises it? Four winds by living forever he answers come and behold when the Holy One blessed be he revived the dead through Yeshiskel that wind although it did include the four winds did not descend in the first place to revive them forever but only to show how the Holy One blessed be he will in the future resurrect in the same way the dead and revive them by that wind included of four winds and although the bones return to what they were the Holy One blessed be he only wanted to show the world that he will raise the dead in the future and when he will it will be for a perfect existence in this world the Torah will then stand as an advocate before the Holy One blessed be he for those who strove in the Torah 213 Rabbi Shimon said the Torah and its words namely its logic with which man was occupied in this world stands always before the Holy One blessed be he uttering speeches and raising voices it is not silent at the time of resurrection it will talk and speak in accordance with man's devotion to it and his occupation with it in this world they will therefore rise to complete existence and everlasting life as we have said for that reason the ways of Hashem are right and the just do walk in them but the transgressors shall stumble in them 214 Rabbi Shia continued the discussion with the verse now Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did to all Israel and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tent of meeting Ishmael 222 he asks could it possibly occur to you that the priests of Hashem would do such a thing? The scripture specifies their sins earlier as it is written for the men dishonored the offering of Hashem Ibit 17 and the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered Ibit 13 also before they burnt the fat the priest's lad came and said to the man that sacrificed give some roasting meat for the priest Ibit 15 no but you shall give it me now and if not I will take it by force wherefore the sin of the lads was very great before Hashem Ibit 16 and although they took only of what was theirs the priests to eat they were nevertheless punished for treating the offering lightly from this we learned that they were righteous as they were very strictly dealt with yet here it is written they lay with the women that assembled and committed such a grave offense 215 he answers heaven forbid that they should commit such a transgression especially in such a holy place for Israel will rise and kill them but they only detained the women from entering the temple and protested that they must not come in to pray before the offerings were sacrificed they detained them because their offering held no portion for the priests this is why they detained the women who wanted to enter the temple hence the words they lay with the women that is held them from entering the temple as we have said 216 there is a similar meaning in the words and lay with Bilhah Bershi 35 22 heaven forbid that he lay with her he only stopped her from performing her marital duty with Yaakov by disarranging the bed he did this in the presence of the Shechinah because wherever intercourse is performed according to the law the Shechinah hovers about and dwells in that place he who blocks the commandment of intercourse causes the departure of Shechinah from the world it is therefore written you went up to your father's bed and you did defile it he went up to my couch Bershi 494 and he Lay with Bilhah his father's concubine and Yisrael heard of it now the sons of Yaakov were twelve which teaches us that all of them were counted and their merit remained intact 217 Rabbi Lazar asked why was he first called Yisrael and then Yaakov in the verse and Yisrael heard of it now the sons of Yaakov were twelve he answers when Reuben disarranged the bed he said what does this mean my father had to bring twelve tribes into the world and now he wishes to beget sons are we deficient that he desires others in our stead immediately he disarranged the bed and intercourse was thwarted it was considered as if he showed contempt toward the Shechinah who then hovered over the bed therefore it is written and Yisrael heard of it for by using this name he was elevated to the secret twelve grades the twelve rivers of pure balsam 218 now the sons of Yaakov were twelve this refers to the twelve tribes by which the Shechinah was perfected the Torah again enumerated them as it did before Reuben sinned they are all holy and the Shechinah considered them worthy of beholding the sanctity of their master had Reuben really sinned he would not have been counted among the tribes 219 even so Reuben was punished his birthright was taken from him and given to Yosef as it is written now the sons of Reuben the firstborn of Israel for he was the firstborn but since he defiled his father's bed his birthright was given to the sons of Yosef I did him 51 come and behold blessed be the name of Elohim forever and ever Daniel 220 his works are all true his ways just and his deeds follow the supernal wisdom 220 come and behold everything man does has an effect for it is written and preserved before the Holy One blessed be he when Yaakov came into Leah his heart and desires were with Rachel the whole night because he thought she was Rachel from that union from the first seed and desire Leah conceived it was explained that if Yaakov had known she was Leah but nevertheless thought of Rachel Reuben would not have been considered to be one of the tribes he would have been considered a changeling son but since it was in the absence of intent the offspring was not given a specific name but just called Reuben let's see a son 221 nevertheless everything reverted to its proper place because Yaakov's original desire was for Rachel the desire reverted to Rachel since the birthright was returned to Yosef Rachel's eldest son the place where the desire was that I asked Rachel thus all was properly settled because all the works of the Holy One blessed be he are true and just section 22 who is this coming out of the wilderness smoke that rises from the fat dropping into the fire while Rabbi Yossi cooks leads to a discussion and interpretation of the title quotation Rabbi Yossi explains that when the children of Israel offered sacrifices smoke rising straight up meant that the candle that had been lit was Indeed worthy of being lit however once the temple was destroyed joy was replaced by rage in both the upper and lower worlds and the children of Israel went into exile under the dominion of other gods as they traveled through the desert the Shechinah went before them in a cloud of smoke the Shechinah was attached to all three columns that is to Avraham Itzhak Yaakov and Yosef the latter two being of one essence the reason for the exile we're told is you would not serve the creator your Elohim with joyfulness thus the children of Israel shall suffer until God rises up to redeem them among the nations the relevance of this passage in a spiritual context the notion of offering sacrifices for the purpose of lighting the candle worthy of being lit refers not to the sacrificial slaughter of animals but to the sacrifice of ego in order to ignite the light of the soul the many sacrifices described in scripture pertain to the various negative traits dwelling within it. Consciousness of men removing these traits is the basis of all spiritual work enlightened with the spiritual perspective these verses help us sacrifice negative characteristics allowing the light of our souls to shine ever more brightly 222 on
Clouds of glory about her when the Shechinah would go so with the children of Israel as it is written and when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle then after that the children of Israel journeyed Bimit bar 917 when she ascended the cloud rose high and all the people of the world saw and asked who is this coming out of the wilderness like columns of smoke 225 the cloud in which the Shechinah was seen was made of smoke why because the light kindled by Abraham and its hot his son clung to her and never left her whenever the fire seized her smoke would rise up 226 moreover she was perfumed with myrrh and frankincense by perfumed it is meant that she was attached to the other two sides mitigating and enveloping one another Abraham's cloud on the right and its hawk's cloud on the left the powders of the merchant refers to Yaakov this means she was connected to the three columns myrrh is the right column Abraham frankincense is the left column its hawk and all the powders of the merchant is the central column that connects both this is why it is called the merchant who holds both types of fragrance in his hands 227 another explanation is that the powders of the merchant refers to Yosef the righteous for his coffin lit archaeas had traveled by her he was called the merchant had Rachel also tail bearer because he slandered his brothers had Rishalu before his father according to another explanation he was thus called because just as a Merchant possesses all kinds of bundles of incense and perfumed herb powder so Yosef maintained the Torah for he observed it as all the precepts of the Torah are connected to keeping the holy covenant which he did 228 another explanation connects the powders with Abraham it's Yaakov and Yosef who had one and the same image this is the meaning of the verse these are the generations of Yaakov Yosef Bereshit 372 thus the words with all powders of the merchant refer to the source from which the river is drawn and flows Yezid which is Yosef everything is watered from it and the faces of all are illuminated 229 come and behold when Yisrael dwelt in their land and offered sacrifices they approached nearer to the Holy One blessed be he when the sacrifice was offered and the smoke rose straight they knew that the smoke from the altar lit the candle worthy of being lit all faces shone and the candles were burning 230 since the temple was destroyed not a day passes. Without wrath and anger as it is written and an El who had indignation every day Tehillim 712 joy was banished above and below and the children of Israel went into exile under the dominion of other Elam and then the verse is fulfilled as it is written and there you shall serve other Elohim Devarim 2864 231 he asks why did Israel deserve all this he answers as it is written because you would not serve Hashem your Elohim with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things of it 47 to 48 he asks what is the meaning of the abundance of all things he answers here there is the abundance of all things and their want of all things 232 so it shall be until the Holy One blessed be he arouses himself and redeems us from among the nations as it is written that then Hashem your Elohim will turn your captivity and have compassion upon you and will return and gather you from all the nations amongst whom Hashem your Elohim had scattered you if your outcast be. At the utmost parts of heaven from there will Hashem your Elohim gather you. Devarim 303 to 4 section 23. Now these are the generations of Esau. This passage explains why scripture does not enumerate the sons of Esau until after the death of its hawk. While Yaakov's sons are enumerated long before he dies. This we learn is because Esau abandoned the true faith completely leaving Yaakov with an enhanced portion as well as the heritage of his father and his ancestors. The relevance of this passage is Hawk's son Yaakov and their succeeding generations forged the spiritual path that led to the revelation of the Torah and therefore they represent its eternal supernal light. Esau however embodies the force of darkness and eternal death. This section connects us to light of the Torah expressed through the patriarchs. It's Hawk and Yaakov 233. Now these are the generations of Esau who is Edom. Bereshit 361. Come and behold Esau's sons were not counted while. Its hawk was alive as were the sons of Yaakov who were counted before he died of Esau. It is written and its hawk expired and died and was gathered to his people being old and full of days and his sons Esau and Yaakov buried him followed by now these are the generations of Esau who is Edom. Why were they not counted in his lifetime because only Yaakov and his sons are the portion inheritance and lot of its hawk for that reason Yaakov and his sons who are the portion of the Holy One. Blessed be he were counted Esau however had no portion in the side of the faith therefore his accounts were settled only after its hawk died when his portion was separated from holiness into another place 234 come and behold after its hawk died and Esau went to his side it is written and Esau took his wife Saudi from his brother Yaakov bear she 366 in doing this he left both capital and profit to Yaakov he relinquished the bondage of Egypt which is the capital and the profit therefrom. The heritage of the land of Israel he sold his share of the cave of the Machpelah and went from the land of faith and his portion thus walking away from and leaving everything 235 come and behold how much Yaakov's portion was increased in all respects when Esau left him and went to his own lot and portion Yaakov thus continued to hold the heritage of his father and his ancestors and so it is written and went into another country away from his brother Yaakov he asks why is it written away from his brother Yaakov he answers because he did not care for his inheritance or share Yaakov's lot of faith happy is the lot of Yaakov of whom the verse says for Hashem's portion is his people Yaakov is the lot of his inheritance Devarim 329 section 24 and these are the king's rabbi Yesa begins a discussion of the verse behold I will make you small among nations after God created the world he placed 70 ministers over the 70 nations these Ministers are best described as intelligent supernal influences they are angelic forces that rule and direct the affairs of the nations on a spiritual level of all the ministers Esau is the most despised before God as he represents the side of defilement the lower grades we learn form a hierarchy and are linked and interlocked by a bond that holds them to their proper side the unclean side diverges into numerous paths and distributes power to the multitudes in the lower world the quotation. These are the kings refers to the grades of Esau which reigned before there was any king over Israel before the higher grades were perfected and the kingdom of heaven was established in its own place never to be removed the relevance of this passage a reading of this section arouses the light of protection against the powers of darkness though unseen these negative entities are as real as the equally invisible atoms or the force of gravity 236 and these are the kings that reigned in the Land of Edom before there reigned any king over the children of Israel. Bear she 3631. Rabbi Yesa began a discussion with the verse Behold, I will make you small among the nations. You are greatly despised. Obadiah 12. Come and behold, when the Holy One blessed be, he created the world. He divided the earth into seven regions that correspond to the seventy ministers appointed over the nations. These are the secret of the exterior. Chesed, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadiazid, and Malchut each. Consisting of ten and thereby totaling seventy, the Holy One blessed be, he appointed the seventy ministers over the seventy nations, each according to its worth, as it is written, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Devarim 328, 237. Among all the ministers appointed over the nations, no one is as despised before the Holy One blessed be, he as Esau's. Minister because Esau represents the side of defilement which is despicable before the Holy One blessed be ESAV's minister was issued from the small grades behind the millstones from the emptiness of the red sides came the minister of ESAV therefore it is written behold I will make you small among the nations you are greatly despised which has the same meaning as upon your belly shall you go and dust shall you eat all the days of your life bear she 314 greatly resembles the words you are cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field of the 238 come and behold within the lower grades there are grades upon grades that are all different than each other yet they are both detached from and attached to each other in such a way that malchute of each of the grades is separated yet each malchute is interconnected to malchute the reason is that as one enters another ascends and thus they are united by a bond 239 this bond has one level of the central column each Level contains three bonds as the central column contains all three columns each bond contains one crown namely the crown referred to in the verse the crown with which his mother crowned him Sher Hashirim 311 and in every crown there is a singular force of command 240 the force of command was assigned by being crowned from above and assigned to descend until the stars and constellations are attached to it every force of command in each of the three crowns contains one star and one constellations because all the stars are connected to the upper grades and
said, Let my Lord, I pray you pass over before his servant. Beersheet 3314 is that Esau's grades are the first to enter and be perfected, for the lower grades are corrected first and the higher grades later. They were therefore before there reigned any king over the children of Israel, for the time had not come for the kingdom of heaven to rule and join hands with the children of Israel. He therefore said, Let my Lord, I pray you pass over before his servant. 243 after these grades are perfected, the kingdom of heaven will be aroused to rule over the lower beings. Its rulership shall start with Baniam and the youngest of the tribes, namely with Shal, who is of the tribe of Binyamin. This is the meaning of the verse. There is Baniam and the youngest ruling them. Tehillim 6828. The kingdom began to take root in him later, coming into its own place to King David to be established and never to depart. Section 25 Yaakov Israel and Yeshurun Rabbi Shia discourses. On the names Yaakov Israel and Yeshurun which appear in the verse, yet now hear O Yaakov my servant, these names represent three different grades, yet all amount to one. Similarly, the terms created, formed, and made, which also appear in the verse, represent three different grades, yet all are one. We learned that the children of Israel to whom God gave the Torah so that they might merit the Holy Land and a portion in the world to come are fortunate indeed, while the idolaters will one day be destroyed. The relevance of this passage when the light of the sun passes, though a prism the beam refracts into the seven colors of the spectrum, the colors are many, but they are one spiritual light follows the same profound principle with each grade of light offering another frequency of fulfillment. Three colors in the divine spectrum of light shine through to our souls in this passage through the words created, formed, and made, and Yaakov Israel and Yeshurun, these three help us. To merit a portion in the world to come and connect us to the divine energy radiating from the land of Israel. 244 Rabbi Shia continued with the verse, Yet now hear O Yaakov my servant and Yisrael whom I have chosen. Thus says Hashem that made you and formed you from the womb who will help you fear not O Yaakov my servant and you Yisrael whom I have chosen. Yeshua 441 to 2 come and behold how many times did the Holy One blessed be he promised the children of Israel that he would cause them to inherit the world to come for he desired no other nation or tongue for his portion but Israel alone. Therefore the Torah of truth was given to them through which to merit and learn the ways of the Holy One blessed be he and thus inherit the Holy Land for whoever merits this Holy Land has a portion in the world to come as it is written your people also shall be all righteous they shall inherit the land forever. Yeshua 6021 this has already been explained 245 there are three grades in. The verse before U.S. first Yaakov and Yisrael and Yeshurun last and we should know the difference between them. Come and behold we already explained Yaakov and Yisrael though both grades are the same. 246 he asks why are Yisrael called by the name of Yeshurun? He answers Yisrael and Yisrael are one the meaning of Yisrael as it is written he should then assemble have Yashir row of many. 3327 is that he takes a row from the one side and a row from the other side because there are two. Rose he is called Yeshurun in the plural also Yisrael is derived from row Hebshira being the letters of Yashurel in the singular 247 Yisrael is pronounced with the letter sin which alludes to officialdom Hebserera for having command and power over all Yeshurun is thus named after the two parts the right and left sides the two rows already mentioned they are all one 248 he explained that all these names amount to one Yaakov my servant for he is a servant at times and abides. His master's command and executes his wishes also Israel whom I have chosen means to dwell on all is according to a deep mystery it is thus written that created you O Yaakov and he that formed you O Israel Yeshua 431 and Hashem that made you all these grades are counted as one therefore the verbs created formed and acted are related to them respectively one grade is over the other and all these grades are one 249 happy is the portion of Israel that the Holy One blessed be he desired them above all the idolatrous nations of which the scripture says they are vanity the work of delusion in the time of their punishment they shall perish Yirmeyah 1015 when the Holy One blessed be he will wipe them away from the earth and he will remain alone as it is written and Hashem alone shall be exalted on that day Yeshua 211 section 26 fear not you worm Yaakov Rabbi Yehuda leads a discussion of the title verse and the regenerative power of it. Children of Israel, there are two explanations for the comparison of the children of Israel to the worm, as well as an explanation of the comparison of the children of Israel to clay, which actually signifies glass. Finally, an interpretation of O men of Israel reveals it to represent the tree of life, because the children of Israel cleave to the tree of life. We are told they shall one day rise from the dust and be established as one nation to serve God. The relevance of this passage, the tree of life, is a realm of pure light and energy, devoid of darkness, death, and decay. While our world is a domain of constant desire for light, the tree of life reality embodies infinite light, standing in the way of our deepest desires and the endless light that can fulfill them. Is a single curtain. The ego of man, our darkened world, gives us the opportunity to earn and create the light by striving to remove all aspects and influences of our ego via Torah. This spiritual commitment is how a man cleaves. To the tree of life by helping us eradicate our egos, these verses connect our souls to the tree of life. Reality 250 Rabbi Yehuda began the discussion with the verse Fear not, you worm Yaakov, O men of Israel, I will help you, says Hashem and your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Yeshua 4114 Come and behold, the Holy One, blessed be he put all the heathen nations in the world under certain ministers as we learned, and they all follow their Elohim as it is written, for let all people walk each. In the name of his Elohim, Mishah 45, they all shed blood, wage war, rob, beat, and fornicate, they mingle with those who cause evil, thus their power to harm increases. 251 The children of Israel have no might or power to overcome them except through their mouths, that is, prayer as a worm has no might or power save in its mouth, but by its mouth it wears through everything, thus the children of Israel are called worm. 252 Another explanation of Fear not, you worm Yaakov, is that there is. No creature like the silkworm which produces glorious garments that are the raiments of kings after its spinning it produces a seed and dies later from that very seed it lives again the children of Israel are like this worm although they die they are revived and live in the world as before 253 it is also written behold as the clay is in the potter's hand so are you in my hand O house of Israel Yermeo 186 he asks what is this clay he answers it is the material of glass although it may break it is mended and may be used again in the same manner although the children of Israel die they are resurrected 254 O men of Israel is the tree of life namely Zeir and been called Israel because the children of Israel cleave to the tree of life as a result they will be endowed with life and rise from the dust to be established in the world as the one nation that will serve the Holy One blessed be he as it is written that they may all call upon the name of Hashem to serve him. With one consent, Sophania 39, section 27, midnight and the morning prayer after Rabbi Lazar recites the SHMA and says his prayers, Rabbi Yitzhak begins a discussion of the proper times to pray before commencing a journey. For example, we should first consult God and offer prayer. We should also offer prayers at midnight and in the morning after the sun rises, but not in the darkness of early morning, since this is a time when husband and wife are bound up as one in the secret of union. The relevance of this passage in truth prayers are non material cables that transmit specific spiritual influences to our souls. Different influences are broadcast at intervals during the Earth's rotation and orbit around the sun. The ancient sages understood these timetables and constructed the appropriate cables in the form of prayers. Reading this passage helps align and tune our prayers to their highest frequency, maximizing their strength and effectiveness. 255 Rabbi. Elazar and Rabbi Yitzhak were walking together when the time arrived for reciting the SHMA. Rabbi Elazar stood up, recited the SHMA, and said his prayers afterwards. Rabbi Yitzhak said to him, We learned that a man should, before going on his way, obtain permission from his master and say his prayers. 256. He replied, When I started, it was not yet time for prayer or for reading the SHMA. Now that the sun has risen, I prayed still before I left. I beseeched him and asked for his counsel. Although I had not yet recited the morning service. 257. I have been delving in the Torah since midnight when morning broke. It was not yet time to pray because during the darkness of early morning, the wife and husband converse and are in the secret of union as one. Then she retires to her abode with her maids who sit with her there. Thus a man must not interrupt them with another matter when
day they remained bodiless because they were disowned by both the sixth and the seventh days because the defiled spirit cleaved to him we further learn Anna was able to find these spirits and they taught him of matters pertaining to defilement but whoever walks in the ways of God may encounter them without fear the relevance of this passage we have all felt the influences of the dark forces roaming through this physical dimension the energy of this particular passage wraps us in the protection of the light this spares us harm from evil spirits while strengthening our resolve to connect more devoutly to the light in all our endeavors 259 Rabbi Lazer and Rabbi Yitzhak continued their travels until they reached a field where they sat down they lifted up their heads and saw a mountain with strange creatures circling its peak when Rabbi Yitzhak became frightened Rabbi Lazer asked why are you afraid he replied I see this huge mountain with strange creatures on it and I am afraid lest they will attack us he said whoever is fearful should be fearful for the sins he committed come and behold these are not the same creatures who used to haunt the mountains 260 he began the discussion by quoting the verse and these are the children of Sivan both I and Anna this is Anna who found the Yemim in the wilderness Bereshit 3624 this verse has already been explained yet come and behold these are not those mentioned in the verse the Yemim dwelt there in times past but the children of Esau succeeded them to Barim 210 to 12 261 but in the verse who found the Yemim in the wilderness Yemim is spelled effectively without the letter Yud which is an indication of want because the descendants of Kain after he was driven from the face of the earth are strange creatures as it is written behold you have driven me out this day from the face of the earth and from your face I shall be hid Bereshit 414 and, and dwelt in the land of Nadabit 16 this has already been Explained 262 kinds descendants are from the side of spirit storms and fiends for when Shabbat was about to be sanctified at sunset ghosts that were created from that side roamed about without a body they were born neither on the sixth nor on the seventh day being born at sunset and thus there is doubt as to which day they were from as they are disowned by both this day and that day 263 they kept on spreading from that side of kind that is being his descendants clothed by that side yet without tangible existence Yemim is therefore spelled without a yet for they are disowned by both days that is by both Friday and Shabbat because they were created at sunset they may be seen by men that is despite being ghosts once a day they don a body and have found the spirits called Yemim and they taught him how to bring bastards into the world that is by mating an ass and a horse so they would issue a mule they haunt the mountains and don a body once a day then strip themselves in. Remain Bodiless 264 come and behold Anna was a bastard from Sivan who came to Anna's mother and begot a bastard he therefore came from the defiled spirit that cleaved to him and enabled him to find these spirits who taught him matters that pertain to the side of defilement 265 come and behold these and several others who came out from each other were all from that side the left side they may be seen walking in the desert a desolate place in which they live for destruction always comes from the left side for all this a man who walks the paths of the holy one blessed be he and fears him is not afraid of them they went and climbed onto the mountain which means that they extended the light of the left into the Mukba and feared not 266 rabbi Yitzhak asked are all the desolate mountains also their dwelling place he replied indeed they are but of those who study the Torah the scripture says Hashem shall preserve you from all evil he shall preserve your soul Hashem shall Preserve your going out and your coming in form this time forth and forevermore. Tehillim 121 7 to 8 section 29 I will praise Hashem with my whole heart. Rabbi Lazar quotes the title verse and proceeds to discuss the righteous ways of King David who devoted his life to God. David knew that when the northern wind stirs at midnight God joins the righteous in the garden of Eden. He also knew that the words of the Torah spoken at night ascend before God. Therefore he would rise at midnight to sing songs and to praise God of all the titles that he gave. His songs hallelujah was the greatest because the word encompasses both the name of God and the call to praise him. Rabbi Lazar then concludes by explaining the meaning of whole heart and the assembly of the upright. The relevance of this passage the might and mystical wisdom of King David stirs within our soul as we peruse this passage specifically the light aroused at midnight through the actions and songs. Of David descends into our world filling our souls and the souls of mankind this diminishes the spiritual darkness that gives birth to personal and global strife 267 Rabbi Lazer then quoted the verse Hallelujah I will praise Hashem with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation Tehillim 1111 this verse has already been explained yet come and behold King David worship the Holy One blessed be he all his life he would rise at midnight to praise and offer thanks in songs and hymns to establish his place in the kingdom above 268 he knew that when the northern wind stirred at midnight the Holy One blessed be he rose in the garden of Eden to delight himself with the righteous David therefore rose at that time and strengthened himself with songs and praises until morning 269 this is because the Holy One blessed be he is then in the garden of Eden we have explained that he and all the righteous in the garden would listen to his voice as it is written. The companions hearken for your voice cause me to hear it. Sure Hashem made hundred and thirteen a thread of grace would also be drawn upon him by day as we learn from the verse in the daytime Hashem will command his steadfast love and in the night his song shall be with me. Tehillim 429 moreover the words of Torah he uttered during the night would rise and be adorned before the Holy One blessed be he King David therefore would devote the whole night to the worship of his master 270 come and behold. Hallelujah from all the songs and hymns David had sung the greatest was Hallelujah as has been explained what is the reason for this it contains both a name and praise he asks what are they the name is Yahweh what of the praise the praise is the congregation of Israel which is the Mukva called Hallel because it perpetually offers praise to the Holy One blessed be he and is never silent as it is written do not keep silence Elohim do not hold your peace and be still El Tehillim 832 because it Offers continuous praise before him. This is why a name and praise together are hinted at in the word Hail Yahweh. Praise Yah 271. I will praise Hashem with my whole heart. It has already been explained that with the whole heart means with the good inclination and the evil which are constant companions to man, as was explained in reference to with all your heart. Devarim 65. This means that the good inclination dwells in the right part of the heart and the evil inclination in the left part. It is true in this case as well. 272. In the assembly of the upright refers to the children of Israel who are called upright because all the grades are adorned through them. The priests and levites, the righteous and the pious who are upright in the congregation has the same meaning as stands in the congregation of El Tehillim 821. They are the mystery with which the Holy One blessed be. He adorns himself. 273. It therefore behooves a man to constantly praise the Holy One blessed. Be he because he desires songs and hymns whoever knows how to properly praise the Holy One blessed be he will find that he accepts his prayer and delivers him this is the meaning of the verse I will set him on high because he has known my name with long life will I satisfy him Tehillim 9114 to 16 section 30 you are my hiding place Rabbi Lazer explains the terms hiding place adversary and songs of deliverance all the songs and hymns of David we learn contain profound allusions to wisdom because they were composed with the direct inspiration of God Rabbi Lazer then discusses the meaning of the verse you did push me hard David addressed these words to the other side which presses man to turn away from God as David knew well God protects those who guard against the evil inclination the relevance of this passage King David was a brave and valiant warrior by day's light and a profound mystic during the hours of moonlight spiritually David waged war and conquered the evil inclination within himself. This is the decisive battleground where the greatest of wars and conflicts unfold, employing the mystical wisdom of Kabbalah. David skillfully wielded the power of the light and thus triumphed over the forces of darkness. The spiritual might and courage is instilled within us by these ancient verses. Moreover, the light of David empowers our prayers, securing for us greater protection against the internal forces of evil and increasing the light that powers into our lives and hence into the world. 274 Rabbi Yussi quoted the verse, You are my hiding place, you shall preserve me from the adversary. You do compass me about with songs of deliverance. Selah 327 My hiding place refers to the Holy One. Blessed be he who is a hiding place and a shield to the man who treads the paths of the Torah. The secret of the central column and is hidden under the shadow of his wings so as not to come to harm. He asks, Why then does it read you shall? Preserve me from the adversary which has the same meaning as you are my h
saying you do compass me this verse may be read forwards or backwards from both sides yet its meaning remains the same 276 come and behold the songs and praises sung by David contain mysteries and high matters of the secret of wisdom because they were all inspired by the Holy Spirit which dwelt with David when he recited poetry hence they were all said from the Holy Spirit 277 Rabbi Lazar continued with the verse you did push me hard that I might fall but Hashem helped me to live 11813 he said it is written you did push me when it should have been written they did push me why is it written you did push me as it was not the Holy One blessed be he who pushed him but his enemies he answers this is the other side which always pushes man in an effort to turn him away from the Holy One blessed be he it is the evil inclination the constant companion of man to which David addressed the words you did push me hard that I might fall because it with all the troubles that came upon him almost caused him to turn him from the Holy One blessed be he in regard to this David said you did push me hard that I might fall into Gehenom but Hashem helped me by not delivering me into your hands 278 it is incumbent on man to guard against it so it does not obtain mastery over him then the Holy One blessed be he will guard him in all his ways as it is written then shall you walk in your way safely and your foot shall not stumble Mishlei 323 and when you go your steps shall not be confined Mishlei 412 it is also written but the path of just men is like the gleam of sunlight it shines ever more brightly until the height of noonday Mishlei 418 Rabbi Yehuda said happy are the children of Israel for the Holy One blessed be he keeps them in this world and in the world to come as it is written your people also shall be all righteous they shall inherit the land forever Yeshua 6021 blessed be Hashem forever amen and amen.